Good evening, members of council, Mr. Lane, members of staff, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. I apologize for being a little bit late. I was just at an 85th um, anniversary celebration of the Horticultural Society in town at the library, so I apologize. So without further ado, let us begin our, our uh, special uh, special meeting, Committee of the Whole. It has been moved by Councillor King, seconded by Councillor Papp, that the agenda for the November 25th special meeting of Committee of the Whole be adopted as circulated. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. <coughs> It has been moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor King, that pursuant to Section 4 of the Procedure Bylaw, the rules of procedure be and are hereby suspended as follows. Section 28, Rules of Debate, whereby only a member of Council is permitted to participate in debate, and Section 36, Conduct of Members and Persons Addressing Council, whereby no person except members and officers of Council shall be permitted to proceed beyond the area set aside for members of the public or press without permission of the chair or council. Be it resolved that James Lane, in recognition of his pending appointment to council for the town of Pelham to fill the Ward 1 vacancy, be given special status for the duration of this special meeting of the Committee of the Whole, and that Mr. Lane be permitted to take up the vacant Ward 1 representative place at the council table and that Mr. Lane be permitted to participate in the discussion relating to the agenda items and that this permission be recognized for the debate only and not be deemed to be included as making motion or voting privileges. Any discussion on the matter? None. There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Mr. Lane, you can uh, join us up here at the, at the table. And certainly... Uh, on behalf of council colleagues, we welcome you and uh, thank you for accepting the appointment. We look forward to working with you through the remainder of the term. We uh, failed to uh, do disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Do any members have any pecuniary interest they need to disclose at this time? Okay, can that be so noted? Yes, I'm sorry. I thought you wanted that yeah. resolution first. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. So we've already adopted the agenda. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I did. And uh, now, next on the agenda is a presentation regarding the capital budget. Ms. Pupal. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council, staff, members of the public. Uh, the presentation tonight <coughs> of the 2014 capital budget will prove to be a very aggressive budget uh, and as council will uh, be made aware that it's mostly related to uh, pending development in the East Fawn Hill lands. Um, council and senior staff received a copy of the 2014 proposed capital budget on November 20th. Um, council will note that uh, the budget looked a little bit different this year with the new branding and the work that was done um, by Ms. Anna McKnight, uh, the marketing communications director. is much appreciated. The, the binder covers, for instance, um, the templates set up in the, uh, the tab sections were all created by Anna and also this template for the presentation from the Corporate Services Department was set up by her as well. And um, I just wanted to take this time also to thank all the staff for their help with the budget process. It was uh, extremely onerous this year with respect to the number of projects and, and making sure that we maintained an affordable level for the public and the Corporate Services Department, for instance, as well, for getting the binders ready, and everything seems to happen at the 17th hour, so I really appreciate their work. Um, and included in this budget, there's discussions that happened throughout the year that have brought forward some of these requests that are, you'll see tonight in the budget. Um, in particular, the community input at the October 15, 2013 budget open house has driven some of the requests in this budget as well. Um, pending development, as discussed, of the East Font Hill lands has also dictated specific projects that need to be completed in order for that development to get started. And the strategic plan, as always, we look at the strategic plan and the de deliverables for 2014 and make sure that those are, are captured in this budget as well. And this is just some of the, uh, the items that we've identified as the deliverables and the priorities for 2014 from the strategic plan just to make sure that we're in line with the, the focus of council and that our projects are um, lining up with what uh, the vision was for the town. 
In 2013, we had many successes, um, as uh, the CAO had indicated in a report to Council last uh, week, or two weeks ago. Um, under self-sustaining community, for instance, besides we have one picture of Port Robinson Road, um, we would have been out and taken 31 other uh, road projects that were completed in the last year, but uh, we didn't have enough space on the page for those pictures. Under stronger technology implementation, again, the branding was something that was very big for the Town of Pelham in 2013, and you'll see it's identified throughout this whole presentation tonight as well. Um, the new telephone system, that's something that's uh, a very strong technology um, source for staff, uh, from everything from knowing where someone is when they're uh, away from their desk to having your voicemails from your phone system go to your cell phone so you can receive them when you're out of the office is a another tool that we have. Um, and the new Town of Pelham website, uh, it's been launched to staff internally with a soft launch. It's expected to go to the public within two weeks, pending testing. Under the visioning for town facilities, you'll see the Isaac Rail Memorial Skate Park under construction, um, estimated completion at the end of December, close to middle December, somewhere in there. Uh, the Marlene Stewart Street Park Pool House uh, and Old Pelham Town Hall that's getting uh, renovations annually. And then balanced growth, uh, you know, we have the development charge back on study that's uh, pending a public open house. The official plan is ongoing, uh, hoping to be finally complete in this year, and the Peace Park Master Plan. Other highlights of the budget, um, it builds, definitely builds on previous year's successes. Uh, the development, again, is driving much of the budget request for 2014. There's community input, as discussed already, and the five-year forecast which allow us to remain focused and uh, plan for long-term sustainability. Um, it ensures that our financial needs are constantly being looked at, how we uh, match to our debt and repayment limits and reserve balances, and that it allows us to adjust as required each year. Um, and there's two major infrastructure investments included in uh, Section 12 of this bi budget binder, and it's Maple Acre Library um, relocation or lease. Uh, new community and recreational facility has also been included, just for reference. The expenditures identified for 2014 represent approximately 42.6% of the total five-year spending. And this is funded largely through existing reserves, grant funding, development charges, and other contributions, including debentures. The major funding of capital projects from reserves, um, it, it, they come from an annual contribution from the operating fund. And that contribution for 2014 increases by 118,000. And that was presented to council at the special budget meeting of council as one of the increases that would be affecting our tax levy for 2014. Here's a summary of the total uh, expenditures for 2014 through to 2018. Um, the five year expenditures are uh, estimated at $45 million with 2014 representing 42% of that at 19170000 um, Now we'll go through each department uh, individually, and as I finish the department, I'll, I'll pause for questions or, co or comments after that section. Um, in information technology, there's a request for $31,000. Um, that includes the annual hardware upgrades uh, according to PSAB, or they become obsolete or prohibitive to repair. Um, the website, we are now launching an intranet for staff to use where they can access all policies and procedures and um, health-related uh, information as they need it for 6000 And we are also looking to do a, a financial management system customization, which allows um, it's specifically in the building department where they can take uh, handheld devices to the, the site with them and uh, report inspections and stuff right on a handheld device, which automatically uploads into our system here, and that's for $10,000. Thank the funding for 2014 um, will be coming from the IT reserve of 31000 and uh, you will note in the binder in Section 2 that the uh, IT reserve is very healthy to 2018 at $171,000. So I'll pause for questions now. Thank you. Questions for Ms. Pupo? Um, <clears throat> help me here. Just what's PSAP? What, what's the acronym for that? The public, um, it's the public sector. standards sector accountability board. It is. It, it defines the useful life of assets. It, it was uh, something that we put in place here in 2009, where we had to have our, um, our all our assets put onto the financial statements. So it regulates that uh, requirement for all municipalities. 
So what this is saying through you, Mr. Mayor, that over the period of over 2014 to 2018, we're going to be spending $75,000 replacing IT equipment based on the life expectancy of those particular pieces of equipment? Or and, and it's not just the useful life, it also is, uh, you know, when it falls, it, it could say it's a, a three-year window. Right. If it's still good in three years, we don't replace it. Right. It's just, okay. it's put in there for that reason. There's an estimate that if those pieces of equipment still are compatible for our uses, we will keep that. But yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Councillor Kersey. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> a couple of questions. First question is, when we got your presentation a couple of weeks ago, it basically identified the PSAB replacement 15,000, but there was no reference to the intranet or the customization. Is this something new that just happened to come up or? Uh, no, there was further discussion. Um, the uh, IT coordinator was off on uh, sick during the, the, the process of creating the, the budget. We knew that there was um, uh, the internet was out there. We didn't have a cost estimate for it, and also the um, financial man management system. I, I believe the financial management customization was in the previous um, presentation. I'm not. It was. I think so. Yeah. Okay, my mistake. If it was. No, no. I'll, I'll, we can look here. Carry on. Um, do you foresee any other customizations going forward here? Um, not at this time. I mean, uh, the, the software itself is very progressive. It, it, it goes along with technology. This, um, this component of it requires that not only do you have to customize the software a little bit to the town of Pelham, but you also have to buy the handhelds. And that's what, yeah. whether, whether or not we had the software, we would have to buy these handheld devices for the use of the uh, building inspectors. I see. Yeah, we did. It, it, it wasn't. It wasn't there, Councillor. But we did. I do remember having the conversation mm -hmm. about it, and it presented to us by Ms. Pupil. But go ahead. It, you're right. It wasn't in that previous presentation. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, one last question: uh, How many servers do we have here? Um, we have Two. eleven. Oh. We have eleven servers. So we're oh. planning to replace uh, four of those servers over the next five years. Well, again, it's it's like the piece of component. It's telling us useful life is up, but we, we've marked it so that if they need to be replaced, but we definitely would look at them. And if Mike determines that they're good for another year or two, then they'll be pushed out. So it's just to identify that's what PSAB is telling us, that their useful life is up at that year, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Our oldest servers are from 2006. They typically have a lifespan of about five to seven years. Um, they've already outlived that lifespan, so he's just monitoring them for 2015 at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and through you, uh, can you quantify the savings that will come to us uh, from the customization of the financial management system? I, I should imagine that there are some uh, some efficiencies that are going to be realized. Can you quantify that? I don't have a number right now. We don't know. Uh, we're just uh, de determining what the system will look like and how it will be um, um, brought in place for 2015. Um, right now, they have to physically go out, uh, write it down on paper, bring it back in, then they give it to um, the admin assistant who put, then puts it into the system. So that, that process right there will be completely eliminated. There's also the risk of losing uh, the paperwork or misplacing the paperwork because it is a uh, a hard copy of the information uh, inspection report or what inspections are needed. <laughs> um, the system will also allow um, developers or builders to log in and request a building inspecting inspection and setting a time for one instead of having to call up and then you know you potentially don't get the the uh, person on li live and you have to call back and back or whatever. So we haven't quantified it because we don't know exactly all of the process that will be efficient from that process from the new software. But we are working with the company to determine exactly what what it will take from point A to B to, for the for the staff, and then we can do the process the way it's currently being held, and then see what that savings is. At a later date, we can bring that forward at a later date. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, so what I'm I'm gathering is that that you anticipate the impact of this to be more inspections done with the same set of resources and the information to be current and available and accurate. Yeah, exactly, and accurate and are available to all staff. Like right now, um, we've now got a financial man management system that's centralized. So for instance, with before in the uh, accounting department, if someone took out a building permit, we would have to go upstairs, they would have to pull the file and so forth. Now we're able to just log in and access the, that building and, uh, 
file ourselves online without having to disrupt another staff member, see what they've done. For instance, we get several requests about why a supplemental is on a property. Well, we can tell them if, if we know that a pool has been added or in addition to a building. But technically, we would have to tell them to hold on and uh, we would get back to them because we have to go upstairs, get the information, pull the file, see what the uh, addition or, or supplemental was related to, and then typically give them a call back. So this, the, the whole transition with the system so far has really reduced uh, the amount of work processes that have to take pl place to answer one simple question. And we're expecting the same from the building inspecting out on site with the handhelds. Thank you. Councillor? Thank you. I I'm, I'm, I'm guess we're going to trust that we're going to get at least ten thousand dollars worth of, of return on this. It, it sounds like we potentially could, but we haven't quantified it. Yeah, I think the treasurer has offered to uh, come back with a report mm -hmm. uh, on that to talk about the efficiencies. But it also sounds like it's not only efficiencies but greater service. Yes, mm -hmm. somebody doesn't have to wait yeah. a couple of yep. days and get back to them and all those things. So perhaps, Madam Clerk, if you can mark that as a actionable item out of this that we uh, we hope for a report. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further? Thank you. Can you continue to the next uh, section? <clears throat> Fire Department, there's the annual replacement of bunker gear for 2014. It's slightly lower than the average um, because we got caught up on quite a few of the obsolete ones in 2013 and 12. And that's 20,000. And then there's the Fire Chief's vehicle for 40,000. That's been um, requested. The ver current vehicle is used by the volunteers to transport to training and professional development activities and it al is also used to transport the ATV to emergency response scenes. Um, there is the uh, savings of the mileage that we're, uh, we've experienced from the use of this uh, um, by the volunteers of, of about 17,000 annually. Um, so the total request um, is 60000 and it's coming from the fire uh, equipment reserve and development charges. And you will note in the uh, file the um, balance in the 2008 to 2018 is very healthy at 298 And I will pause for questions. Thank you. Questions? Councillor Papp, then a cursing. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, through the fire chief. Uh, this so what I presume is this is an additional vehicle. This is not a replacement. So we will continue to use... A, the same vehicle, the, the 2000, what is it, 2008, 2009 uh, truck? Truck? 2004. 2004. That what red one's 2004? Yes. Okay. So this Chief, is. A, can you answer the question? Is, is, it, is it an additional vehicle? It is. A, it's an additional vehicle. For your use? Yes. Okay. Chief, can you just outline um, what the, the change you've made for mileage? The, the treasurer spoke about it, but maybe just a little bit more in depth for our members of council. Um, when I first came to this position, uh, they didn't have, uh, the department didn't have a service vehicle. Right. So the, the, the firefighters are using their own personal vehicles to go to training, to haul equipment back and forth to scenes, to okay. do bottle exchanges. And, and we uh, um, incurred a, quite a sizable personal mileage bill every year. So uh, I, put a, I took that vehicle and turned it into service one, as we refer to it. And it's used for, and the rules are you use that First, and there's some cases where we have to um, use our personal vehicles. But last year, just year ending, we just did the numbers on, it and our personal mileage for the year was only seven hundred and forty-eight dollars. Good. So it, it was a service vehicle, and also takes the liability, a lot of liability away when the guys aren't using their personal vehicles to do right. things, uh, to pull the ATV around and so forth. So it uh, it's just better practice for us. Good. Thank you, okay. Councillor Kirsten. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my question is with respect to uh, the replacement pumper 2A. I note that uh, we moved it up from 2016 to 2015. Is there a particular reason that that happened? So it's in 2015, Chief. Yes, um, Mr. Mayor. The uh, the vehicle um, for a PSAP is 20 years, but the vehicle is already 23 years old. Uh, and we're getting, it's going to be pushed out even further. Now we send it away every year and get it tested and get it approved. Um, but we're going to start running into, the older it gets, we're going to get more breakdowns. We're gonna, we run the, the chance of doing that. So it's, it's, we're, we're, we're trying to put the vehicles out as far as we can. Um, and then we're kind of trying to space things out. If you look at the 10 year uh, spread we did on the, on the trucks, if uh, we start, if we don't do anything in 15 or 16, 
starting in 17 to 22, there's going to be an enormous amount of vehicles to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So trying to spread it out. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Drury. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm very encouraged with the healthy balance, the reserve balance that's there. But just a couple of years ago, we ran into a, a major expense in mm -hmm. self-contained breathing apparatus because it all uh, reached its best before date at the same time. Is this consideration for replacement of these because they do have to be replaced in this balance or are we adding to this balance in order to make sure that we're not going to get that that big spike in, in expenditure at uh, at some point in time. I think Ms. Cooper can answer that. Okay. Um, you will note in the uh, five-year forecast under the five-year reserve balances the increase is projected to go up for 2014 uh, from 165 or 164 to 175 and going forward from 215 to 218 up to two hundred thousand dollars and it's exactly for that purpose we've taken all his, his projected equipment apparatus requirements uh, uh, vehicles and the SCBA and in order to make sure that that five hundred thousand there is there in 15 years for that recovery this about this transfer to reserve is necessary good news thank you all right thank you others uh, mr. Lane uh, just a question to you, Mr. Mayor, uh, as to the reasoning for an SUV versus a, quote, pickup truck. Do you currently have an SUV? Uh, no, no, to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the SUV will uh, give it, afford us to carry more people. So uh, when you have a pickup truck, we're limited to the amount of people or bodies when you get into it. So we're still, I still make my vehicle available when the guys need it. So we're going to send a half a dozen guys away to, a training night is, uh, or whatever, then I I'm allow them to use those vehicles. So it just, and plus the, the equipment that I carry, my personal equipment, um, it's worth a fair bit of money, and right now it's in the back of a pickup truck. So um, if somebody can steal it, it's, well, I mean, just SUV makes more sense uh, for as far as my day to day operations go. Okay, thank you. Councilor Papp, you had another question. Just uh, quickly, again, thank you. I know we did a catch-up on the bunker gear, but through you, Madam Treasurer, the Fire Chief, I know we got $140,000 uh, projected out for the next four years. Do we need to accelerate that for any, is there any particular pressure on us to uh, bring more of that equipment into play currently? Uh, to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one of the things I've identified in this is that we had some really no maintenance programs. We didn't forecast down the road. You know, the, the SCBA unfortunately had to be replaced all at once, 500,000. Um, we do have options as far as maintenance programs to kind of spread things out. And if we watch what we're doing and we pay attention, um, we will not be running into these problems. Okay. Um, thank you. Any others? All right. Thank you, Chief. Ms. Pupo. Uh, the next department is the town facilities. Um, the request is, it's under section four, the request is 220,800. Um, again, it's going to do the <coughs> second phase of MSP schoolhouse, Old Pelham Town Hall. And you will note that the um, I items identified for replacement have been changed in your binders tonight. Um, there are the actual items that will be replaced in 2014 are the remodeling of the kitchen and the upgrading of the kinsman and senior space, and not what you see up on this slide. Um, there's also a request for the Quonset Hut installation. There was a Quonset Hut, Quonset Hut purchase, and this is to install it at the arena. Um, asbestos surveys to all facilities. Storage shelving at Park Lane. A second floor vault um, upstairs here to turned into a meeting room for staff. And a generator block heater that's required at, at station number two that was a uh, deficiency in the, the construction of the generator. Funding of the uh, facilities projects will be provided uh, from the town facilities reserve and the town's facilities reserve um, got um, a transfer from the roads budget and also from the uh, recreation department uh, because previously the roads budget would pay for all the Tice Road facilities and all the facilities tied to roadways and the recreation would pay for all of the uh, facilities tied to recreation. <coughs> So that portion of their reserve went to the uh, facilities and their uh, reserves were respectively decreased as a result to maintain the uh, 118,000 for the tax levy. And the, the facilities reserve remains healthy to uh, 2018 with a balance of 164,000. And I'll stop for any questions. Sorry. Thank you. I'm just going to ask the, uh, 
to the CAO to comment. We had some discussion last week about Old Pelham Town Hall. Can you uh, just give us council an update? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. After that discussion, uh, it was uh, the question was raised with regards to is it more efficient to do a um, capital project in one lump shot or one, at one time, or is it more efficient to phase them in? Uh, some discussion centered around Old Pelham Town Hall. I have asked uh, uh, Ms. Holland to do a, a report to Council for the December 2nd meeting with an analysis on that particular sure. issue. Uh, so whether or not we continue with the uh, sort of a five-year project doing parts uh, parts at a time or if it makes more sense to do it at one, uh, one shot, um, uh, she'll be making those recommendations at the upcoming meeting on the 2nd. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. CEO. Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Mayor. Um, through you to perhaps Mr. Mantle, looking at the uh, Tice Road, it, it's a flat roof and a flat roof replacement. Flat roofs are great, but when they go bad, they're very expensive. Is there, has there been any ex exploration into perhaps putting a gable on there and the comparative cost? Would that be, uh, you know, something that's better? Because experiences that I've heard about with flat roofs is uh, they're great until something goes wrong, and once they go wrong, it, it's very, very costly to repair. And looking at uh, at the costs here, as opposed to uh, making another roof line, is there you know, any logic to what I'm saying, or is there? Uh, not? I don't know. If Mr. Mano can answer that, or the CEO has indicated he can answer that as well. <laughs> um, so CEO, yes, there's options available. The, um, the newest part of the operations center has a, a peaked steel roof to it. Like it looks, it looks flat from the road, but it has a peaked roof to it. And we could examine that as an alternative, um, as opposed to silly building up the flat roof again. There's, we see those kind of retrofits done on a regular basis uh, on flat roofs, so it's something we, we can look at. Mr. Yes, CEO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. To add uh, to Mr. Mantle's comments, this was something that was originally proposed for this year. I've asked that it be bumped out because there may be some opportunity to look at alternative facilities and some discussions with uh, the region. Uh, so until we know uh, the future of TICE, um, we felt it was good just to defer that. And uh, similar thinking goes behind other facilities. Until we do thorough facilities inspections and have <coughs> a good idea of what the maintenance schedule and the replacement looks like, uh, we're trying to push those out and let uh, Ms. Holland get that work done this year uh, so we have a better understanding of what the condition of the facilities are. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And Councillor King. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. I see that we have funds um, set aside in the budget for the um, facilities asbestos study. In, um, in the event that there is any potential problem, is there funding available to deal with that? Uh, are you, uh, did you want to respond to that, or did you want to respond to that? Ms. Holt? Uh, are you sorry. aware of any funding that's available? I think it was uh, in, in re relation well, to asbestos. Well, we're identifying that we're going to survey all the facilities for an asbestos study. Yes. During that survey, if there are any problems that are that come to the surface sort of thing, um, in order to deal with them, is there funding available? Um, so it would usually be handled operationally. Yeah. If, with my experience in dealing with asbestos, generally asbestos is not an issue until you disturb it. Right. So I don't anticipate, there will be asbestos in our buildings, it's, it's pretty much, um, that's it for sure, but um, until we do construction, so it's been allocated, for example, in the capital plans for this upcoming year, there's a certain amount put aside for asbestos abatement if we choose to do that. Um, there's alternatives, you can go over the asbestos again, because it, if it's an asbestos tile, you can go over it and not disturb it. Mm -hmm. I don't anticipate it'll have a financial impact. Okay, thank you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a comment and then a, and then a question um, of process. Uh, firstly, I'm very pleased to see that um, we're not doing plaster repairs and new flooring in the main hall, and then subsequently in, in follow-up years, uh, we're tearing out the ceiling and installing new windows and what have you, and would have to spend monies uh, to protect the brand new floor that we have. So I'm pleased to see that, and I anticipate uh, seeing, seeing the, the report with respect to that facility. Um, Mr. Mayor, with re respect to process, um, uh, do we need to uh, make a motion with respect to redlining this particular item um, at this point, or does that become a, 
an issue uh, at council. Um, does our, our, is our plan to approve this entire budget and then recommend the entire budget to council uh, at our next meeting? Um, since we don't have that report before us, um, uh, it would be difficult to to uh, adopt the recommend the entire budget when we don't have all the information in front of us. I would think, Councillor, there's, there's, I may call on the on the treasurer for some a part of the answer, because in some respects, um, the, for Old Pelham Town Hall, the way it's been allocated is um, really the funding parts of it, and we will probably have to continue to. My, my belief is we would probably continue to have to fund it in a similar way, um, although we would, we would choose to maybe do all the work uh, up front. So maybe we can hear from the treasurer. Is that is that how we would approach it, or would we put it all into next year's budget? Uh, well, we definitely would show the expenditures, the total expenditures in the 2014, if that's something that uh, was, was deemed to be the, the best way to go. Um, it would be funded from the reserve, but as you as you note, the reserve is uh, will be in a uh, negative situation uh, mm -hmm. because of it. Um, we are um, we do have some other reserves that are healthy that uh, you know this reserve essentially is borrowing money from to get that completed. Mm -hmm. So, um, but re with respect to this um, here, I, I think you know we know we're going to do this regardless. This this we want this this second phase to continue. It's whether we're doing phase three, four, and five as well. So this could essentially be approved, and then we could add those other three phases in, into this after council receives the report from uh, the facilities coordinator. So at minimum, mm -hmm. you would recommend then that we would put in the, the valuation here, I'm looking for the amount, 80,000, right. in the budget, and then if, after receiving Ms. Holland's report, we could add to the budget, recognizing that we would, at the end of the day, Five years down the road, we'd still have the same balance, but mm -hmm. in theory, or hopefully less, or sorry, more, uh, but we would uh, accelerate the work. Right. Does that make sense, Councillor? So, in terms of process, I think what I would what I would recommend is we don't have that information tonight. What I'd recommend is if Council wants to, or Committee wants to continue with the project, that we do allocate the amount <coughs> that's recommended by staff. If that amount is, Ms. Holland says, let's do it all in one in one year. What we would then do is look at increasing the budget this year and decreasing it in subsequent years, and that would follow up um, after our, the budget considerations. So we would have to move an amendment <coughs> to the budget. At but that it's, time. it would all be at the similar to what happened <coughs> with the uh, the ball diamonds when we had to move them for the Isaac Rail State Park. But uh, capital budget was approved already, so we came back with another report. We amended the budget and then uh, distributed to council. Mm -hmm. Very similar process. Would we be better off then to out to to put the entire project in 2014, and then subsequently, if we decide to spread it over the five years after we receive the report, uh, would that be more suitable? I don't know, it sounds like six of one, half dozen, half dozen the other. Uh, staff are recommending it in this way. Um, we did have the discussion at a previous meeting. We can hear again, perhaps, Ms. Holland, why it's being recommended this way. I understand the report itself recommends doing it in this report from a few years ago. Ms. Holland, can you just uh, comment on that? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think what sort of the discussions followed, um, we had some revisions of the budget, but just in discussions with um, architects and construction people, I mean, you know, financially overall, over a five-year period, you're going to incur more costs. And those will be presented in the report, of course. Um, construction costs and um, consultant costs, to some extent. Um, so there are pros and cons. I mean, from a financial standpoint, it's, it's much better, I'm sure, to do it the way that we're presenting this evening. Um, you know, I'm just going to present facts in terms of what I know from an architect and a construction standpoint. And, and you know, not to mention design continuity and material availability and those kinds of things. So it'll be more of a presentation. Here's some information. And, and you can you know, make some decisions from there. Okay, thank you. Mr. CAO, can you comment on the councillor's suggestion that the other way, that it be budgeted in full and then 
I would recommend that we leave it as it's been presented. It makes sense to stay on the course that we're on. And uh, if the event comes that council wants to change that, it's uh, easy to change that as we come to it. Um, my understanding is that the original architectural assessment that was done on the building um, did suggest that phasing in the work is uh, very feasible um, because it, you know, sort of they're independent modules of improvement. They're not all uh, sort of interconnected. Um, so I, I'd recommend we leave it the way it is. And if council does decide to change the budget, they can certainly do so once they've reviewed the information that's presented by staff. Okay, thank you. Yes, well, I'd be, I'd be curious to find out, Mr. Mayor, if the uh, consultant took into consideration the imposition on the users of that building, uh, the fact that uh, over a five-year period costs are escalating, that every time we bring in a consultant it increases costs, every time we engage a new, cons a new contractor we increase costs, and if there is a way that we could fund it and do the project in one fell swoop, at least the interior, if we have to do the exterior at another year, that that's fine it wouldn't impose on on the users um, and if there was a way that we can fund it uh, without having an impact uh, uh, or a significant impact on the, uh, the rate payer then to me it makes perfect sense to do it that way um, I, I'm willing to wait and see the report uh, so as not to belabor this discussion but be prepared that I will be bringing the issue back up for further discussion okay thank you okay. Councillor Papp I think uh, picking up on uh, Councillor Kersey too, as a matter of process too, and I, I just st I stand corrected. I see in the recommendation it says that the committee that whole approved this. We don't approve anything. We recommend approval by council. And correct me if I'm wrong. So that leaves the room that you need that in case the report comes back and says stay the way you this, the current course or if you wish to amend it. <clears throat> but my past experience is that we're not recommending it. We're recommending approval. Am I wrong? Yeah, you're That's recommending correct. council to approve, but mm -hmm. just I, I don't want to read too much, and we don't approve anything. We're just recommending it. So, Councillor Chrissy, if in fact, you know, you come back and you say to us we should do it this way, then we can always change it, and that could apply to any item that's in this budget at this point. I stand corrected, but I think that's <coughs> the flexibility and variability we the, have. The clerk has adjusted the uh, recommendation oh. from the treasurer, and you, you I didn't hit see the nail that. on the head. So it says the committee of the whole recommend the council approve. So. Perfect. Okay, I'm good. So we can okay. deal with it then, Councilor okay. Kurtz. Yeah. Thank you. And and if need be, Councilor, we can change the order of the agenda, etc. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And Perfect. I'll think about that when we look at the agenda. Councilor Papp, you have I other. Just quickly uh, through you to this. Um, picking up on Councilor King's point, the asbestos are, I guess, from a from a sense of confidence, is, do we get a feeling or do we have a, a pretty good idea that this thirteen thousand dollars will do the survey? Testing costs. When surveys escalate very quickly. Yes, um, I actually had a, uh, a quote given to me in that amount, slightly less actually. Okay. So I'm, I'm pretty confident. Got a sense of confidence. Okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay. Others? Uh, I have a question regarding the block heater. Is there any warranty on the um, the engine? It's for the generator. Any warranty on the generator? I mean, twenty years. Was it a deficiency? When it was first put in, etc. I don't know if you can comment on that in open council. It was actually a deficiency in the original build. The the block the generator requires a block heater according to the CSA standard. That's that's where I'm at. She did yeah. the 17. Um, and it didn't. It was not equipped with one. So when we did the um, the annual inspection this year, it was identified as missing. And um, at this point, that five thousand is sort of a I don't have a firm quote, but I think that's going to cover the installment of a block heater to make us um, compliant with that CSA standard. Okay, so it's not a case of it was drawn in and not included, it's just wasn't even contemplated. Yes. Okay, thank you, that clarifies it for me. Anything else on the uh, facilities? Okay, thank you. We'll, we can move to the next section. Um, the next section is the roads budget, section 5. The request in the roads area is fourteen million five hundred thousand. Holy smokes! Four hundred and ten. What are you doing? Come <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, super right. highway down Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> um, road just, diet. Just to note, um, yeah, road diet. <laughs> uh, there's twelve point two million that's specifically related to the development uh, requirements, 
and that includes uh, East Font Hill Street construction, um, the urban road reconstruction of 3.6, and uh, part of Fenwick revitalization of the CIP area. Um, other than that, the roads, um, the rest of the roads budgets uh, maintain the levels of last year um, for rural reconstruction, uh, urban reconstruction, and rural and urban resurfacing. There's also the request for the watershed master study, uh, phase one of 100,000, um, highway 20 sidewalks, traffic signal updates, the church street sidewalks, and also pedestrian signal crosswalk, Fallenbrook to Tanner Drive. Um, Given that uh, $14 million, the funding will come from the roads reserve. I just have to say it over and over, Al. Or $4 million from development charges, $7 million from a debenture, and $1.4 million from potential grants. The roads reserve balance remains very healthy to 2018 with a balance of $1.5 million. Thank you. I will stop here for questions. Questions, comments? Uh, Councillor Gurley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to uh, Mr. Mantle, I, I'm looking at different types of servicing that are going to be applied, and uh, one says HL3 asphalt, and another says single surface treatment. Could, just for information, what is the difference between that? What, what are these uh, uh, these applications? Mr. Mantle, the, the single surface treatment is reserved for um, rural type roads. It's uh, more or less a seal coat. To the, Tar and chip, okay. sort of thing you see in the rural areas. Um, the HL3 is a top layer finish coat of asphalt that goes on the, the urban type roads. Um, that we identified for those type of roads just due to the nature of the, the side yards and that sort of thing, where um, you don't want to have loose stone and that sort of thing. There, there aren't usually there aren't roads, you don't find a roadside ditch there. It's um, just simply curbs or uh, um, the, the edge of the road goes right up to the, the lawn. Modus is more more than usual. Thank you. Just, just one more question uh, through you again, Mr. Mayor. At the AMO conference, uh, Councillor Papp and I visited a booth at the trade show with a uh, an application that prolongs the uh, prolongs roadways and that, and some information that was sent in that I forwarded to the uh, to the CAO, and I'm sure you have seen it. Is is there been any investigation as to comparative costs and and uh, usefulness of, of these applications to uh, to this it's a seal coat type of material also it's similar to the, um, the the single surface treatments that we do I think it was slurry seal or something along those lines yes um, it's something that was used to, they used to do here like when I first started they were doing that and they we haven't done it since um, it's because um, it's doesn't give you the, the wear course that you really want you want to have some stone like a rougher surface then for those rural type roads where the speeds may be somewhat higher than what we would find in an urban setting. Okay, because okay, I know speaking to the fellows at that booth and of course they're salesmen and they said how wonderful this product was and how cheap it was and how good it was. I was just wondering if uh, comparison wise if it was perhaps a better product but if you're completely satisfied with what's going on and have the rationale for that, that's fine. Thank yeah. you. They're similar. The, the, end, the prices are, are similar per square meter or per kilometer. You don't see a lot of difference in, in what you pay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I have Councillor Ribiak and then Pat. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I see um, in the list of things to do a watershed master study phase one for $100,000. Phase one suggests that there's a phase two and I can't find reference to it in the subsequent years. Mr. Mantle? It'll be what we envision with the phase one, and again, these are simply rough numbers, it will be to investigate each watershed. Um, the first one would be um, likely uh, possibly the Ridgeville drain watershed. Uh, take it to its outlet or the Big Creek drain. Uh, work your way all the way upstream to the termination to, to deal with all the, the watershed issues. Uh, the roadside ditches that drain to them. Um, the natural water courses that drain to these uh, municipal drains. That's how we envision it anyways. Uh, following you, you do the, the next study. Um, <coughs> and then if there are corrective actions required, that's going to be an additional cost on top of that because now you start getting into your maintenance issues, right. which would likely, uh, again, depends on where the work is involved. If it involved around the municipal drain, then that's accessible to the benefiting landowners. If it's just to simply roadside ditches, that would be dealt with uh, our ditching program. If it's natural water courses, that's a whole different story, and that requires council to make some decisions as to whether they want to create municipal drains uh, of those natural water courses. 
Mr. Mayor, I think the point of my question was, is there going to be money set aside for phase two or for other phases in subsequent years? I didn't see any reference to it. I'm just wondering. Uh, there should be. Uh, that's probably an oversight. So, so the subsequent years just should have had it and it's just not there. That's correct, yes. Th thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councillor uh, Papp, taking that question. No, uh, Councillor uh, Rebia asked the same question as I did. Okay. Councillor Kirsten. Uh, thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mantle, I noticed that when I look back on some of the previous budgets, uh, when I look at some of the significant projects, specifically Merritt and Port Robinson Road, the extensions over to Rice, I noticed a significant difference in terms of the costing. Uh, you know, projected uh, on our previous budget, Merritt Road was projected at 600000 Now it's $1.3 million. Port Robinson was... Uh, Projected at 600,000 uh, back uh, a couple of years ago. Now we're up to 1.3 million. Um, I'm just wondering: has the scope of the project changed? Was there just a, was just uh, the way the original budget was put together and the projections not scoped out uh, as we're actually building it? Uh, just how do we come up with the numbers? Well, we're, now we're getting down to the close to the actual build dates, and now you're getting into more <laughs> active design type numbers. You know what's all what's involved with the project. So I think that's where the changes come. Initially, it's just simply a roundabout number as to you know to identify the, the there's a cost there uh, based on our current prices. Um, since those uh, estimates were prepared, um, we've identified. Um, Sidewalks and bicycle lanes and, and all those kind of things get you know thrown into the mix um, mm -hmm. and more like just different standards that we're we're using. Okay, as a follow up, Mr. Mayor. So, so in general, what I'm interpreting there is that it's the, the, the significant change is a function of the scope <coughs> of the project yes, in. because we've gone to a complete street model or as close to a complete mo complete street model as we can. Well, that and. We're getting more detailed in the in the estimate costs now. There's a, a, a rough design prepared already, so now we know what those costs are. As opposed right. before, it's just kind of here's an, we want to go a kilometer, kilometer costs half a million dollars or what have you. As a further follow up, Mr. Mayor, it, is there no way? I mean, when we start projecting out at um, for one, two, three, four, five years, is there no way that we can get a Closer type number when we because when it comes into play when we start looking at reserves and how we should be funding and planning ahead that we should be trying to accomplish uh, numbers that are at least closer maybe within 10 or 15 percent of the uh, the true cost of the project and I mean I'm not criticizing or faulting I'm just maybe criticizing the process and looking. To improve the process, so that when councils sit and look at a five-year projection, that they can at least have some comfort that looking out five years, where you know I, I understand two and year two and three are probably more accurate than four and five, but there still should be some ability to rely upon the numbers that we're looking at. And I just wondered if there would be a way that not only with your particular. Uh, uh, group of uh, undertakings, but with all of the uh, undertakings that we we look at, we we place some reliance. At least I think council does place some reliance on those numbers when we look at the sustainability of our community uh, going forward and the reserves and what have you. So, Mr. Mano, can you <coughs> do you have further assistance? I think um, in most cases, like we do, we make our best attempt with the information that <coughs> available. We're certainly not going to go out and do a a detailed topographical survey of something and then yeah. come up with estimates based on which are these these current estimates are prepared based on that um, that sort of detail now like and I think with the preliminary type estimates um, as I said they're a rough number um, sometimes you, you you estimate based on numbers that you already have um, in, in hand like for previous projects and, and work from there and sometimes we're right and sometimes I think we're way off base and uh, from time to time, there's changes, in, as you said, in the scope of the project. Merritt Road is an example. It started out as a, um, they identified a, to cons be constructed a certain way, and now it's completely changed as to, opposed to what originally was intended. Right there. It's a collector style road, and that's how it's going to be constructed, as is for Robinson Road. <laughs> okay. Two more questions, if I may. Go ahead. Yep. Um, the next question was uh, directed to the treasurer. 
We're constructing a significant portion of this budget is we're constructing a couple of major roads within the East Vaughan Hill development. Mm -hmm. And it's not DCable, I understand. However, uh, it will benefit abutting land owners. So when they bring forward their development, would they be able would we be able to charge back any of that mm -hmm. to them? Not through the DC, but through a, some sort of a front end loading agreement or something along that line? Uh, I don't believe we will be able to charge back. I can refer to the uh, CEO if he wants to comment on it. To CEO? <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. To answer the Council's question, uh, no, we can't. Uh, there is a small portion of the road, <coughs> excuse me, uh, surrounding the proposed Civic Center and the proposed arena that would be DCable. That's it. Uh, but the road construction itself in East Fawn Hill is cost shared 50 50. So we're paying half the cost of the road development because we're half of the land owner. Uh, in the case of the land with uh, uh, that we're, we're joined to River Realty's uh, proposed development, that's a cost share with them. And then we cost share with the Allen Group on the rest of the, uh, the roads in East Fawn Hill. <coughs> So, so in fact, there is some cost sharing already there is, undertaken. There, there, the cost sharing is already built into okay. the system. Okay. Yeah, okay. So this is to get to the portion. Mm -hmm. This is our uh, required okay. contribution. Okay. Yes. Thanks for that clarity. And one last, uh, it's a small point. Um, one of the things we said in our uh, strategic plan priorities was that we would develop signage, which was consistent, and start working on a, a consistent message with our signage. Uh, and there's no allocation in the. Uh, I presume it would be in this budget, this section of the budget. And I just wondered, for the foreseeable future, I just wondered if, if there's been any consideration given to that. Mr. Mantle? We deal with signage in the uh, operating budget, yeah. not in the capital. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. thank you for that clarity. That includes like the welcome signs and things like that? All in there, yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Others to the votes? I'm sorry, Councilor Papp. Um, through you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, to uh, Mr. Mano, just uh, as a cautionary note, I, I, I see the, I'm picking up with Councillor Kersey's, Line Avenue to Rice Road will be reconstructed for purposes of the uh, benefit of East Font Hill. But you just, you triggered something that back a few years ago, and I think Councillor Dury remember, I'm thinking of the constituents along Merritt Road and what they think is going to happen with Merritt Road. And, and I'm thinking of more of the, education of the and the people that live along there mm -hmm. because I understand what you're going to be doing for line Avenue down but are you going to be making any other supplementary changes to Merritt Road going up to South Pelham or is that going to remain the same and the only reason I bring that up is because I'm, I'm just worried about what people may perceive is going to happen and I don't want to get false perceptions if you want to call it that of what's going to happen on that road because I know at one point we talked of changing that way back, and I remember that discussion vaguely. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Mr. Oh, yeah, no, I, I think we did talk about that, and then people got all uptight because they said, you're not going to turn it into collector road, yada, yada, yada. But in fact, we are turning it into a collector road. Is that a fair statement to say? And I just worried about Mr. Mayo, if you'll, you recall, several years ago a report came I remember forward, that very well. And it was to deal with um, the adjacent neighborhood right. to uh, that um, section of Merritt Road and it was to keep it as a semi-urban correct cross section so that's what the design is based on now and okay. you know it's more of a hybrid type of design okay. you know, there's gonna be curbs and but there'd be also swales and roadside ditches in places too you know so we don't get involved in um, massive stormwater management facilities you know so it'll more or less deal kind of be exactly the same as what we see out there only more I guess urbanized so to speak mm -hmm. um, sewers and water main will also go in uh, to service the area and the adjacent right. homes. The, the section of Merritt Road from uh, Line Avenue to Pelham Street is identified, I think, in future uh, years uh, for reconstruction. Uh, it has to, that section of Merritt Road has to be completed before work can commence on Pelham Street with the reconstruction in that area because that has to be done first. That has to, you have to have a storm sewer outlet. Okay. So, you know, they're, they're all kind of tied together. You can't sort of take one out and move it around. To talk to these people. Uh, I, I think, Councillor, the other consideration that may not have been in place at the time of that discussion, and I remember it, I'll well, say fondly, council, yeah. yes, um, is a change to the East Fawn Hill Secondary Plan. At that time, there was going to be a, a road coming out mm -hmm. uh, mid-block mm -hmm. um, from the, so 
sort of going south onto onto Merritt. That changed, and then it, it went into Rice. So they'll. It, it's anticipated that the uh, the traffic won't dump out onto onto Merritt. It'll instead go to the regional road. I agree, Mr. Mayor. What I'm getting at is public education of how we're going about doing this construction. Yeah. This is major <clears throat> construction that's going to change pat traffic patterns and that is that we make as much advanced time as you know and I know from previous experience that people in that area are aware of how this, and I appreciate how you're tying in the semi-urban because that was discussion into the collector side. The people are understand what's going to be happening. So I won't belabor tonight, well, but I think somewhere down the road, <coughs> As we start planning this out and getting a, I guess before even the, or how the whatever the process is that these people become very aware of that this, this is going to happen because all of a sudden I can just see it the sign going up for the construction. Next thing they want to go, what are you doing? What are yeah. you doing, Mr. Mantle? Maybe um, I know there's some money in this year's budget for the design of that road and Port Robinson. Um, will it follow the same process that Port, the current yeah. or, or Hay Street or the current process went through? On Port Robinson, where there was yeah, a public right. environmental assessment open house. Yeah, we'll go through the same process, we'll the, edu the same educational process. process. You know, uh, with any project, regardless of how, like generally speaking, the urban projects will send out notices to the residents, right. just simply saying, "Hey, this is All what we're doing. Uh, we did it on Sheldon Lane. We sent them right. a copy of the plan. Right. Here's what we're doing. If you have any concerns, right. you want to add an extra driveway right. entrance, those sort of things. It gives them a, a bit of advance notice as to what's happening, and they can plan around it. But, yeah. but just for clarity, there will be EAs. For um, these plans, I would think so. Yes. Okay. Good. The okay. consultants handle all that stuff for us, you know. So it's you know we they they they're the experts on it as to the direction where we we go and what's required as part of the process. But there will definitely be some form of an open house. Okay. Uh, as a minimum. Councilor, and I, I appreciate that, Mr. Mano, because I think from our past experiences, uh, I'd also, you know, give some I should say um, senior advice on how. Things are handled at those public information meetings so that everybody capiches up front what's going to go on and not make anticipation. And uh, I look forward to that because it's going to have a significant impact, as you know, on how we develop in East Vaughan Hill. Plus, those neighbors on that side, Kunda Park, and all the rest of them. And I think John, you and I, they'll be asking us all kinds of questions like, "What's going on here?" So that we got to give them the assurances there's that that they're they're in step with us and they agree with us. So the last thing we need is we don't need any more delays, particularly as we start moving through East Spot Hill. So I appreciate that, Mr. Mayor, and thank okay. you, Mr. Mantle, for that explanation. Thank you. Mr. Lane? Uh, yes, if I might, Mr. Mayor, a couple of questions. Uh, one would be uh, the item uh, traffic signal update, Pelham Street at Quaker Road. And I'm just wondering what, that's a stoplight there now, what that, up, what that update might consider. Mr. Mantle? Th those traffic signals are, um, Right now, if you drive to that intersection, you'll see it stopped at times when there's no cars. There are no cars coming out from any direction, um, so they're just simply automated to come on every minute or so, uh, or actuate every minute or so. The updates will allow for um, uh, they need a new power source. Power source is worn out. Um, there's just a number of faults with that. Those signals. Um, they really need to be completely rebuilt, but we'll hold off on that until the intersection is reconstructed and deal with the whole issue at that done. time. So it's just. Um, uh, power and um, signal actuation is what we're working on now. Thank you. And, and the second one would be the pedestrian signal crosswalk at Fallingbrook. Is that, is that going to be like a stoplight or just a, uh, what, what's that going to be there? That'll be um, a pedestrian crosswalk. It'll be a traffic signal, more or less, just okay. um, similar to what the other three we have planned for um, uh, on Pelham Street. Okay. So it's it's like the one in front of AK Wig, yes. School, exactly. <coughs> Mr. Lane. Thank you. Uh, anyone else with the questions? Uh, Mr. Mantle, or or maybe this is a question for the treasurer. Merritt Road. We've applied for funding for that from the provincial government. Is Merritt a go ahead, sort of regardless of the of the answer of that funding, or um, can, can we just hear about that? It says here the grant, 65% if received. I guess that's part of your grant formula on this slide. So can we just hear a little bit more about that? Is that being red circled or whatever that whatever that was that we did well, last year? Typically with the other grants that we applied for last year, um, they would come back to council 
um, especially if we don't receive the funding for it, then we don't have the uh, required funds. We'd have to ask for council to use reserves or a debenture to pay for that portion right. of the grant. Right. So. Um, this uh, merit road will definitely come back. It's a road that can be pushed out one year, correct? It's possible if, if development doesn't come to the, to the area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, Port Robinson was identified as the priority, uh, merit road the secondary. Um, it was the best for the grant application though, so we're hoping to be successful on that. And it, But if it doesn't come back, or regardless if it comes back, council will be made aware either way, and then council can decide if that road goes forward based on, um, you know, maybe at that time we have more information about uh, the development as well. Okay, thank you. And the, um, uh, so we haven't heard about that. Okay. Uh, regarding Port Robinson Road, um, it's the same price as Merritt, although it's totally different because it's an urban cross section, uh, but it has bike lanes and sidewalks. Is that correct, Mr. Bailey? Correct. And then we are going to apply for to the region for funding for those uh, bike lanes. Is that what we'll be doing, Mr. Randall? Yes, we will do that. <laughs> okay, so there might be some additional revenue coming in. It's on the bike master plan, if, as I recall. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that's it. I think those are all of my questions in it. Oh, I, you know, the one that's not here, um, and maybe we can hear a little bit more about this. This is in the presentation that was suggested by residents, and it was to complete the sidewalk from Pancake to Welland on the west side of the road. Um, that's not in the budget. Can we just hear why why is that not being presented here? It said it was uh, sent sent to the director for comment, but we haven't heard the comment from the director. Um, I was there not a report that came to council yet? Maybe not. Okay. The, the, the sidewalk that the sidewalks that were included in you did do a sidewalk report, but that was not one of them. Okay. Um, the, I don't think was it. There we go. I don't think so. Okay, I thought it was in the body of the report, but it's possible that it wasn't. Um, I'll have to look I can give you the, the update. I can tell you. Like, the, the intent is to construct the sidewalks at the same time as the road is reconstructed. Right. Um, it, it's extremely difficult to construct a sidewalk without reconstructing the road in those type of areas. You know, um, I don't even know how you would do it along there. It was tough enough to do it along uh, the piece that we did on Town Street this year. Uh, you're trying to match into uh, the various boulevards and driveways and that sort of thing, as well as an existing road surface. And the same thing would be required on um, Pelham Street, as you get south of Pancake Lane and head down towards Quaker Road, you have uh, very deep roadside ditches on the west side of the road. Uh, you have shallower ditches on the, uh, the east side. However, you'll be back in the boulevard area on that east side. Uh, the land undulates up and down over top of driveways. It's just an extremely difficult project to do without a complete reconstruction in the area. So the recommendation is to not construct sidewalks at that time or until the, the road is dealt with at the same time. The costs um, are become extremely expensive um, just simply because the restoration is, is just for a sidewalk, not for road reconstruction, which also involves drainage improvements and, and those sort of things. So you, you're, you'll be paying you pay twice for the restoration type work uh, in those areas. Um, the and I, I don't really like there are already are roadside shoulders in the area. Like the shoulders are two and a half meters on each side of the road. They're gravel shoulders. Um, if council was really interested in, in doing something there, we could always pave the shoulders and uh, delineate them with uh, bumble strips at the edges of the road um, and pavement markings, that sort of thing. Those are options. Okay. I appreciate that. And, and so uh, if I were to try to explain that to somebody, could I say that it's because of the roadside ditches and it's a different topography <coughs> than the section that was completed? Somebody's going to say, well, you did it here. Why can't you do it there? It's it's because of those big ditches, yes, uh, and correct. and the, and the topography essentially. That's correct. That and the expense. And you're saying it makes much more sense <laughs> in that area as opposed to the other area, to do it at correct. the same time as the reconstruction. Yes. Okay. Well, that that um, that helps with that, and I hope we re reply to that those individuals that wrote to us uh, requesting that the rationale for not recommending to council that that be done. Okay, thank you. Is there anything further on the uh, 
$14 million roads budget. There being none, uh, next section, please. There is a request for vehicles of 62,000. Uh, that includes the lease of a multi-purpose tractor. Um, the tractor will be used this year to determine the actual needs to clear the snow from the sidewalks throughout the town, which is to begin, uh, was, it has begun on November 1st, but we haven't had enough snow yet. Um, two turf motors need to be replaced um, that have uh, exceeded their useful life under PSAP. And a landscape trailer to replace unit uh, 710 for $6,000. The funding uh, for these projects will come from the vehicles reserve and the balance remains very healthy to 2018 with 168,730. And uh, pause for questions. Thank you. Councilor Riviak. Thank you. Um, I'm assuming from all this that we're talking about a single year lease for the multi-purpose tractor. That's correct. Right. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, to that. Last year, in last year's budget, we had fifteen thousand uh, dollars for a lease of a of a vehicle. Yes, I believe um, the staff have actually uh, brought a, a several vehicles out and tested and tried them and got an actual more determination of what that lease cost would be for this year. And this, the the, the tractor that they chosen, um, that they think will do the best job for us, was at eighteen eight, uh, twenty thousand. But I guess my question is, we already had 15 in last year's that we approved. Yes, it's gone back into the reserve. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's helpful. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on the vehicles? Uh, if you're comparing uh, budgets, as I know Councillor Kersey did, there's big changes in the uh, vehicles budget too, but uh, okay, thank you. Next section. Wastewater, section 7. Um, it's $1.9 million requested. Um, two of the projects are, uh, are driving that number, and that is the, senator, uh, the sewers at uh, Merritt Road and Port Robinson Road. There's also a component of uh, lateral replacements that are, are inspected at uh, the construction of Hay Street, Highway 20, Highland Avenue, and the Fenwick revitalization. The funding for the wastewater projects will be provided as follows. Um, from the wastewater reserves, development charges, and potential grants. Uh, the wastewater reserve balance is very healthy to 2018 with a balance of 779,442. Um, just for council's <coughs> reference, we are doing a wastewater and water uh, rate uh, charge study to determine if the contributions to the reserve um, are in excess of what the requirements are to maintain those uh, reserves in a healthy balance. And I'll pause here for questions. You're giving us the region. Right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think there was a, um, a correction required. It says Rice Road, Station Street to Rice Road. It should be Port Robinson Road in the, in the book. Right. So, questions? Councilor Papp? So, uh, through you to Madam Treasurer, Mr. CEO, 8020, we're going to get this grant. If we don't get the grant, I presume from Merritt Road, we would go out and refinance, right? Either through debenture. Either from, from reserves or, I mean, the report will come back to council with a recommendation, either from reserves or a debenture. So what I'm getting at is we don't need to hang our hats on it because of the importance I'm, I'm emphasizing of both road constructions need to be done. Mm -hmm. So that we don't, uh, I don't want to call it, but don't hesitate that if worse, not worse comes to worse because we got room. If we don't get the grant, we still move ahead with whatever alternative sources of funding we have at our disposal to ensure that, the, you know, the water waste management, the water itself, and the reconstruction of the road happens in those two areas. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that because if we're waiting, I heard something to push it out. I'm thinking, well, yeah, it'd be nice to push it out, but we pushed this out for 10 years. Let's get going. Yep. And rightly or wrongly, uh, not wrongly, but we'll, uh, we have enough room to maneuver. Mm -hmm. If that comes, if a push comes to south, we don't get the money from the province, which we hope we do, but if we don't, we'll, we'll finance it, right? Well, I think we really want the money from the province. <laughs> I see Mike here uh, scrolling down. You know, please don't send a letter to the uh, to the premier saying we don't need the money. We have alternative sources. No, I, I mean, I, it will I, be it, w it will would be difficult for us um, to find those funds. Well, um, that's what I'm getting at. We need a plan B. If we don't get the grant and we want to get the money from the province, definitely. We need to come up with a choice of whether we just do what's the primary. What I'm getting at the priority is Port Robinson Road. 
principle, I want to use that for the sake of argument, or not argument, from logic, and secondary is merit rule, then that seems like the most viable that we have that sort of plan be in place. We don't want to strain ourselves, and obviously, I, I'm, I'm confident the province has been very good to us, and I think they will. Uh, if they don't, then we need to come up with the options of changing that. Come back. Yeah, so and you'll come back. Timing? Yeah, I was just going to ask. Um, very shortly. Before the end of the year? Before the end of the year. So before the end of this calendar year, we'll know. Okay. Make a phone call? <laughs> that's a government timeline. Yeah, that's a, that's a provincial government timeline. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll do that. Thank you. Anything further? Get that water going. Um, again, these requests follow along with the road uh, we discussed There's uh, water main replacements or extensions on Hay Street, Highway 20, Highland Avenue, and Fort Robinson Road, uh, uh, and the water main construction of Merritt Road in the amount of $862,500. Um, the total budget request is just over $1.5 and this is funded from water reserves, development charges, and the potential grant that uh, we will get by for as a Christmas present, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> the water reserve balance remains very healthy to 2018 at 2.6 million. Can I pause for questions? Questions? So just uh, quickly, uh, Mr. Mayor, the uh, water system repair equipment, what exactly is that? What, what are we doing? Um, <clears throat> is that just repair of existing? Meters or what? What exactly is it? Smell. It's um, purchasing purchase of major pieces of equipment in that for the repair type um, area of, of, of the water distribution system. Of the system um, itself. Yeah. It's uh, it could be any kind of mechanical. Like there's mechanical valve openers. They're okay. detailed in the worksheet. I just don't have that. Okay, I didn't see the. Okay, as long as I'm satisfied. With that. Thank you. Is cool, uh, other questions? Uh, Councillor Chris. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, the scope of work on Merritt Street versus the scope of work on Port Robinson is significantly different. One, we're just repairing <coughs> what is there, <coughs> sort of in an ad hoc basis, as it as need be for the cast iron, and then Merritt's an entirely new water main. And then Port Robinson is just a repair of what is there or replacement of what is there as far as cast iron. Yes. Yeah, because it's partially been replaced already. It's partially yeah. been replaced. Okay. And just as a uh, one last question, Mr. Mayor, I don't understand the Highway 20, Pelham Street to 135 meters east. Can you speak to that, please? That's our, our last piece of cast iron water main east of Pelham Street uh, that we'll replace in 2014. Like all the water means are replaced on Highway 20 as part of regional improvements along right. there. And over the region comes along with a project, and we work hand in hand with them. They'll, they'll give us a call and say, hey, we're going to do this th this project. Right. Uh, do you want to participate in any way? Well, as soon as they tell us, we'll identify uh, the replacement of the water main. They've identified uh, resurfacing in that area, so we uh, have a, a little bit of sidewalk to repair, and we'll also do the water main at the same time, which will deal with the last of that, the old cast iron in the area. Okay, that, that brings clarity. So they're actually doing resurfacing yes. work there. Okay, thank you. Thank well, you. Does that put us down to Mr. Mantle in terms of the cast iron that's left? I know it was 14 kilometers or something I a few years ago. Lately. We've done, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, we'll update in 2014. I think the uh, regional consultant said we had a, what did he say, a gold standard water system? Yes, we do. So, it, thank you. Others? The treasurer, Mr. Mantle? Uh, Madam Treasurer, the, um, you just said that we have a healthy reserve and there's an interplay between the um, amount that you put into the reserve and the reserve itself, etc. So what's, what's being considered here is that we continue with the water rate and the, and the life cycle contribution. At what point do we readjust that? Um, what, what triggers that? 
Right now, right now it's based on a previous water rate uh, study that was done um, back in 2004, I believe. So the contributions remain the same. They're consistent with each wastewater and water. Um, the contributions now, since our system is becoming more uh, complete and the infrastructure is uh, um, perfect, a gold star, as the region says, um, that contribution is probably in excess of what's required, and that's why uh, CN Watson was retained to do the water and wastewater study for us. So in two, they're, we're in the process of uh, providing all the information to them right now to develop what that life cycle contribution and the contribution to capital should be. And given what the balances are to 2018, I'm expecting that that's going to considerably come down going forward. So will that be available to us when we look at the water budget in February, that study? I'm hoping the study is done by that time. It should be done because our wastewater, our water budget will come in March. Um, but as soon as the study is complete, a report to, will come to council and then we'll be able to revise the, uh, the, the reserve balances and so forth if, if there's a recommendation for that to be decreased as well. Yeah. And it will also impact on the, uh, the water rates, obviously, because those contributions might be lower than what... Uh, that's, what that's the piece that I was I getting know. to. <laughs> okay, well, we look forward to that. But in the meantime, so then would that require a change to the, to the capital budget? Should it won't require to any on? expenditure in the capital budget. It'll just the, the reserve balance is going forward. This year is complete, mm -hmm. so reserve balance is going forward will be adjusted. So the five-year forecast will, uh, you'll likely see that number come down. Okay, so we look forward to that in the, in the new year. Okay, thank you. Next section. Thank you. Yes, parks and Recreation. Um, under the Parks and Rec, um, as Council is aware, we had the Peace Park Master Plan um, proposal in implementation phase last year. We moved it to the 2014 year um, to start in the spring. Marlene Stewart Street Park parking lot. Um, I better explain where that's headed or involved, but it's uh, to finish the parking lot at uh, the bottom of the hill there with um, the skate park. There's Centennial Park upgrades and Harold Black Park upgrades. A rail trail um, development phase uh, two or three, I can't remember now, Balfour Street to Center Street. Uh, park bench restocking, something that's uh, done annually. Vandal, vandal proof picnic tables in the amount of 10,000. Uh, community garden re request for 10,000. And the relocation of the storage uh, building from Marlene Stewart Street Park to Centennial Park at 8,000. So funding for the parks projects will come from recreation and culture and wellness reserves and uh, also development charges. And here the balance remains um, very healthy to 2018 at 500, just over 500,000. Thank you. Questions, comments? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a comment uh, about a couple of things. Uh, probably the most significant one is the Peace Park Master Plan proposal. Um, it seems to me that we may be putting the cart before the horse here. Um, Council has not adopted a Peace Park master plan as yet, to my knowledge, nor has it seen a budget for the total project, uh, nor have we seen a report with respect to phasing and the cost of those phases. It seems to me that before we undertake to spend $250,000, uh, it would be helpful and prudent and fiduciary, part of our fiduciary responsibility to understand the full scope of that project uh, the full costs of those projects, that project, and the phasing of that project going forward. So I don't know how we deal with that. Again, I understand that would, we would be recommending uh, the adoption of this, but I'm not aware that we're going to get that Peace Park Master Plan report until uh, into the new year. And I'm not sure about whether that report will even contain all of the things that uh, I personally feel we should see before we start adopting a, a master plan and funding it. So it's a comment and noticed. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you want to deal with that. I, I'd well, be willing to uh, put forward a motion and that we postpone dealing with that until we see that comprehensive report. Thank you, Council. I'm going to ask the CAO to respond. Um, and I would note that we actually had the 250000 in last year's budget and approved it, and now we've actually moved um, sort of the yardstick a little bit further. But I'm going to ask the CAO to give us an update on that process. I know there was a very lengthy meeting that you were involved in, 
um, from last week. Uh, yeah, recently. and I specifically asked the um, the uh, consultant to at least give us a global uh, budget, and uh, he specifically said he wouldn't put his foot in it. He would not come forward with that number at that point, and I expressed the fact that we mm -hmm. were dealing with the, the capital budget. And his comments were that it's not likely that we'll see anything before January of 2014 with respect to that. So Mr. I don't know. That, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> that's uh, the, Mr. Mayor, the Councillor's comments are correct that the uh, consultant indicated they wouldn't be able to uh, provide costing until the detailed uh, construction drawings were completed, which that work is currently underway. Uh, I would recommend that at this point that the funding in this, as proposed in this budget, will remain. Uh, you will be receiving, or Council will be receiving a presentation on the PNP agenda uh, for December 2nd that will show you uh, the project. Uh, our hope at this point is I to. You said it was, it was going to be the 16th, right? No, I thought I was. Oh, sorry, the 16th PNP meeting, right? Uh, December 16th, that there will be a presentation outlining the project. Um, it's our goal. We've issued a PO already uh, for an arborist report. Our goal is to do some of the vegetation work this fall, uh, heading into early winter. Um, but also, it's our hope to tender um, early in the new year the amphitheater portion of the project so that we can have that work completed prior to the start of the 2014 band shell. Uh, and if I, I just would feel more comfortable having the ability to have some dollars in there to proceed with at least that component of the project. Uh, moving ahead uh, when and if the construction drawings are done and there's additional monies required then I would come back to council with a report and make a recommendation for work uh, that we could then undertake in the fall of 2014 after the bench shell season was over and complete the remaining construction requirements for the park thank you councillor well I I still stand by my comments I think that um, I think it's putting the cart before the horse. Uh, I mean, I can see wanting to do some arborist work in there if it's a matter of removing dead branches and whatever, what have you, um, and trees that have outlived their, their usefulness. But to undertake uh, our whole, wholesale uh, changes out there until we have a complete understanding of the scope of the project to me, seems to me to be going against the direction that we're trying to, do, to go in other facilities and that is to have an understanding, a comprehensive understanding of the facility, where it is today, where we're going, so that future councils will have a report and for future budgeting purposes will know, have a, a firm direction and, and concept of where we're going. And to just stack up $250,000 on a proposal for a master plan that, and I've sat on all of those committee meetings that and nothing has come back to council in terms of uh, adoption of that master plan to my recollection um, because we haven't even seen the final report and yet we're budgeting money to do it yeah C council received a um, just for the point of information council received a copy of the overarching plan uh, the CEO's report a couple of a um, mm -hmm. couple of months ago mm -hmm. and then there's been uh, meetings with various stakeholders and you were involved in uh, in in one of those one of those meetings. So anyway, okay. Thank you. Others, Councilor Rubiak. This, Mr. Mayor, to uh, this point, topic or yeah. to, to, to this point, <clears throat> is this is this a situation similar to the discussion that we had a couple of years ago with respect to funding set aside for a dog park? We knew we set it aside, but we weren't going to spend it until we got more information. Is that is that the situation we're in with this? Mr. CEO? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, it's similar, not the same. Council has not redlined this funding, which means that if you do approve the 250000 that money is in play for work to be done without having to come back to Council, unlike the Dark Park project. Uh, I will say, though, that once the detailed construction drawings and costing estimates are completed, it, this is a timing issue for me. Uh, we're expecting those by the end of the year, early January. Uh, if that budget to complete the entire park exceeds the one that council's approved, obviously I have to come back with a report and ask for additional funding. Uh, if the project falls below uh, the $250,000, then obviously there would be some savings that would then um, 
become sort of a surplus issue that, uh, um, again, I would report back uh, once I knew that what the budget numbers were. So I, I think it's similar to the roads projects that we were just speaking about, in that um, those projects aren't, you know, all all complete, all there. That there's there's estimates, there's numbers. Um, there will be a report coming to us for the final design and those kind of things. So in that it's a placeholder for some of those roads projects, it's a placeholder for this particular project. I, I see that in personally lined up as opposed to the other, and I think you have the answer to that from the CAO. Thank you. Uh, I, I guess I guess my, my question was to see whether whether similar treatment, redlining, it does, as the CAO pointed out, might, might provide Councillor Kersey with the comfort that he's looking for with regard to that budget item. It's a possibility. I, I guess to you, I'm asking. To this, yeah. Uh, Councillor Kersey. <laughs> um, I could live with that. Okay. Thank you. To this point, Councillor Turley, or to another issue? No, I. I thought you were seeing one. No. Others to this issue, Councillor Pop? Okay. Um, maybe it's my confusing Hungarian mind. I want to be very clear. Have we, in fact, approved a master plan for the Peace Park? Mr. C.L. It's either yes I, or no. I don't believe there's been a formal resolution that's approved the plan um, for Peace Park. The plan at this point is conceptual. Uh, right. So if you want to approve a conceptual plan, again, yep. there will be a presentation that I'll be making at the PNP meeting on the 16th that can be referred to Council for approval, or uh, conversely, Council could uh, approve the uh, detailed construction design when that information is received later in the year. So, or you could do both. Yeah, you can do both. What I'm, what I'm driving towards is picking up what Councilor Kersey is that Notwithstanding, with all due respect to road construction and all the rest, this is a master plan for the downtown area. There's a quarter of a million dollars that have been set aside for construction and other contingencies. So I would like to have the ability and like to look forward to that conceptual presentation. And if it is acceptable as part of a master, in, in con conjunction as part of the development or the finalization of a master plan, I feel more comfortable saying, okay, these are the components we're going to be doing. And then I feel comfortable, um, and I'll leave that to my other colleagues, of putting aside that money subject to those terms and conditions, engineering drawings being done, all these things. Because I, I think it's, it's such an important part. I don't want to delay it. I mean, if, it, if, in fact, it enhances what we're trying to do with a larger piece of work that we're trying to do down the thing. But just as a matter of principle, that the master plan is something that all of us have said along the lines, and I want to refer to another one where we could have should have done a master plan, but we didn't, but now we're getting there. The meantime is we're at a point where I would like to be able to, I'll give you, I'll, I'll wait till that comes forward, and then we can make a decision at that given point with the recommend, and we can do it forthwith for that matter, if that works for us as far mm -hmm. as the, that, and along with, I don't like the word, I don't know about redlining, but setting aside with conditions, the, that it be sort of a conditional type of funding uh, without removing it, mm -hmm. that it's there, and then if we feel satisfaction with the terms and conditions of that, and if Councilor Kersey feels comfortable, then we can proceed. Does that sound fair? Because I, at this point, I don't remember ever approving. I saw a concept, but I have never seen us actually saying this is a good plan and this works. Mr. CEO and the council feels comfortable proceeding along those lines. That's that's all I'm getting at a general basis. Okay. So, what are you saying in terms of what's being recommended? That you would leave it until the 16th, or that you would red circle it until? I would. You're agreeing with I sort would of defer or? this particular consideration of this item until we receive the the report on the 16th of December with respect to the uh, uh, Peace Park Master Plan. Okay. I'd like to go a little further, Mr. Mayor, because on the 16th, uh, we will see the concept plan. We will not have budget numbers. Mm -hmm. We will not have numbers until January at the will earliest we? from the consultant. Have, no, you, that's correct. That is correct. Okay. Will we have? Okay. So I think until we see uh, budget and concept plans, engineering plans, then we know what we're dealing with and, and a phasing report so that I'm, I'm presuming the consultant's going to bring forward a report suggesting that it could be done in these phases uh, going forward. Yes, a question. Yeah, I mean, the, the bottom line is we can't, it's, it's like saying, okay, here's the credit card, 250000 yeah, but exactly. we don't know 
if we do know, and we have a fairly good sense that it's going to fall within that range, and still I need to see it, I think we need to be able to see and, and consider it at that given point. I don't know what the anxious, uh, let me just say this much, the idea of here you want to get stuff done here in the next month, at Peace Park, is that the idea? Well, through Mr. Mayor, we've, we've already issued a PO for the arborist work, arborist and, and, and that is tree removal, those sorts okay. of things. That's fair. Those are relatively minor. Right. We have the costing on that. Right. It also demonstrates to the public that the project is moving ahead sure. to some extent. Um, it's Council's discretion right. uh, on how you want to proceed. Uh, if you wanted to defer the matter in the budget until such time as the construction drawings were done and the costing yep. is done, that's council's uh, discretion. Uh, I would just hope that if there is a desire of council to proceed in the spring, uh, that we have enough time uh, to get the tender out and to get the work done as not to disrupt the Banshell season starting in June. So the window, my only caution to council is the window is fairly tight uh, if we are planning on doing work in 2014. Uh, it's possible if you want to wait, that's fine, uh, but just uh, that it, it becomes critical that we do not interfere with the Banshell Pro uh, Banshell concert series, and that we have a project that we can build in the appropriate contingencies for time, unforeseen delays, all those sorts of things, and not impact them. That that's my greatest concern with the project. Council Pop, I understand that fully. So, if the worst case scenario that if we receive everything, if the best case scenario, receive all the design considerations, cost estimates conceptualizations that we agree upon, let's say January, February, you can approve that. That to me, I, I personally, I, I, I think that's enough time to be able to say budgets approved, send out, get out the, yeah. I don't know what construction time would take, but uh, uh, the last thing was we want to not only just look at the concert series, but the whole area itself, as I understand, is being redesigned, right? right. Uh, that's I, I haven't been privy to all of the, uh, the, the yeah, information. That's, that's correct. The, the, bench, the bench structure itself, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, is uh, uh, untouched, but it's the surrounding area. So <coughs> the phase one uh, spring construction would focus on the extension of the of the um, uh, park entrance, the stairway in, right. uh, interlocking brick right. to extend the service area and the amphitheater construction. Uh, phase two would be largely uh, path construction, uh, planting, landscaping, um, and that would be fall work. Um, and there's a couple other parts of the plan that we're not recommending right away that we would defer until a future date, but okay. that'll be covered in the presentation on the 16th. Okay. So, so Councilor Papp, I kind of put some language here to, I, I, think, means, I'm, I'm, I think, pulls in the, the, the debate that's occurring. And so this is for your consideration. In, in, instead of deferring it and then trying to put it back in, that it sort of be that idea of a red circle which is an approved in principle pending adoption of a peace park, council's adoption of a peace park master plan and a more detailed budget estimate, overall budget estimate, something like that? Yeah, in principle. I don't, yeah, that's why it's, it doesn't, I don't want to defer it. I just want to be able to, in principle, approve it subject to the considerations of those designs and cost estimates in the next reasonable time, what, 30 days, 60 days? I, so, a, New Year. so approve in principle pending Council's adoption of the of a Peace Park Master Plan right. and a more detailed overall budget estimate. Yeah. So it's really the two pieces. It's yeah. the it's the December piece on the 16th, and then it's the more detailed budget estimate in January. So if you're comfortable with that, I'm very sort comfortable of the with that. It gives us, yeah, and it gives us enough time. And if we're in agreement, then fine. We can say, guess what? It's, we're going ahead with it. Yes. <laughs> so, Councillor Kersey, will you second that? I will. Okay. So the amendment is, um, I, think, I think you've heard it a couple of times. Any further discussion to this? There being none, I call the question on the amendment. All those in favor? Any opposed? That amendment carries. Thank you for the discussion. Uh, others to the Recreation, Culture, and Wellness uh, Budget, Councillor uh, Durley, and then Mr. Mayor, uh, the first one on the list here is the rail, rail trail development on Balfour. Uh, I'm looking and I've heard some uh, some concerns about the existing Steve Bauer trail in the <coughs> resurfacing of that. Should that be in capital or can that be dealt with in operational? Because there's some some sections of that that folks are saying if it rains it's muddy and there mm. should be some resurfacing on that. Is that should that be included in capital or, or 
going to be a maintenance issue. We can operation. answer that, Ms. Van Ravensway, or Madam Treasurer, or um, Mr. Mayor. It would depend on the uh, extent of the uh, maintenance, but we normally cover that under the operational. Okay, I, I could point out the location of the, of the uh, uh, where I was made aware of some concerns there. So I'll do that, and, and if the operational budget will take care of that, I, I think it's a minor expense, but certainly it's uh, to these folks, it's an important uh, important issue. Okay, okay. thank you, thank you, Councilor Rubiak. Thank you. Um, I, I was struck by um, a line item. Uh, in addition, vandal-proof picnic tables and park benches are estimated at. Ten thousand dollars each. I suspect you meant each year. We're not buying picnic tables at ten thousand dollars, are we? I gotta ask. Nine point ten says eight fifty per table. <clears throat> um, There's eleven point six tables. That, that would be the total cost of picnic tables to replace. Um, we have an ongoing it's issue on um, our wooden picnic tables being used as uh, firewood constantly and having to replace them so if we have vandal proof we're hoping that they'll last longer than thank you and through you mr mayor i, I appreciate that we need vandal proof yeah. tables i'm assuming that the cost is less than ten thousand dollars each otherwise the firework would be easier to re replace but my, my my question is if it's if the each was if each year I don't see provision for it in, in subsequent years. So is this 2014 the only year we're, we're doing this, or I'm, I just want clarity on this. The, uh, the amount here would probably, uh, I believe that we're figuring on enough to fill each of the pavilions. Uh, that's at Centennial Park, um, mm -hmm. Carroll Black Park, uh, and I think that was it that would replace them and they would stay there. They would stay there. Yes, they will be locked down and they should last for years. Through the Herald Black Park. So <coughs> through you again, Mr. Mayor, the word <coughs> each is just misplaced. It's, it's not 10,000, it just shouldn't, no. the word shouldn't be there. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you, I'm much relieved and very pleased. Thank you. <laughs> page 9.10. Actually, in the, in the package on page yeah. 9.10, where it says vandal proof picnic tables, the project description points out replacement of wood pic wood picnic tables with vandal proof metal tables cost is eight fifty per table. So we're gonna get eleven point seven tables, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's just no two. <laughs> there you go. That'd be fun to say. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I, Shipping I, and handling included. There. Yeah. I appreciate that. Obviously, I didn't dig that deep into the uh, the individual. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Others to the. Uh, Recreation Culture Wellness Report. The, I'm going to ask this question. The um, minor baseball came and asked about the uh, conversion. So that's that's being done at all the diamonds or just one diamond? Um, conversion yeah, from actually um, stone to diamond clay. two at Harrow Black Park. Black, it's a very large 000. diamond. Yeah. Under draining. Um, the play, the new mound, which will um, actually match. Uh, this year we, we replaced the backstop, the side fields, new benches. Um, so that should be completely done. And we're going to continue to work our way through the other parks, the other baseball diamonds. I, I don't see it in, the, in future budgets. Actually, I don't see it in the future budget either. <laughs> You're correct. It should be identified. We should be working our way through um, North Pelham Park as well. There's two additional there. Uh, and the main reason for doing this is because of the, the uh, players having to slide yeah. into. Yeah. Does it need that under draining and all that other stuff? or? It depends whether. Uh, because it's clay versus. The original um, park was under drained or not. Carol Black was not. Each each part would be looked at to see whether Okay, I think it'd be important to to look at that. I know other communities have made the change, especially because of the rule, so it should be included, I think, in the budget, future budget. So thank you. Councillor Kersey, you wanted to uh, thank you, Mr. Have Mayor. Some I have further uh, two, questions. Uh, short 
uh, hopefully less controversial issues to, to bring forward. Um, I'd like to get some clarity on a community garden. I've seen no staff reports with respect to the community garden. Uh, now we're all of a sudden budgeting $10,000. I'd like to get some information regarding that and uh, where it would be built and why we're spending $10,000 on a community yard. Mr. Mr. Mayor? Is that you or Ms. Van Raven's way? I was going to turn to staff. Councillor Kersey? Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor uh, uh, Ribiak? Th thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I just wanted to, to let you know that it was at my request that that line item was put in. And by way of background, uh, Communities in Bloom and the Horticultural Society are in the process of discussing at this time a joint venture with respect to community gardens in an attempt to, to find common ground and, and to, to work together in, in achieving uh, uh, something important to, to many uh, in the community. The, uh, the $10,000 figure is, uh, is a figure that was set aside uh, because as talks uh, go on, we are, are doubtless going to receive, achieve some, some level of understanding about whether to proceed or not to proceed, and that $10,000 is considered to be a, uh, a figure that is probably more than we're going to need from the town in order to accomplish uh, a, a community garden. So that's, that's by way of background on why it's there, and there may be other details that, that staff may be able to provide. Ms. Van Ravensway, are there any further details? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the Communities in Bloom Committee has been um, trying to partner with the Horticultural Society for years on any projects. This is a project that they both came up with, and they've been working through it. Uh, at this point, they're hoping to follow through with it and have a community garden. This is a community garden as in vegetable garden, so whereas they would offer plots. And um, they have uh, surveyed the community. There has been some response. They have now, um, they're investigating on whether the response is, we have a very caring and giving community. Many people want to give um, uh, materials to build, although um, there will always be items that will be needed, such as fencing and so forth, um, to offset. I believe at the December 2nd uh, meeting, there will be a presentation from Communities in Bloom, the Horticulture Society, and Greening Niagara. Uh, Greening Niagara has um, <clears throat> had, you know, uh, I believe they have 12 community gardens uh, throughout the region, um, so they do have experience in this. Okay. We are just uh, right now trying to identify the actual need to have the garden. But if it did go through, uh, definitely Councillor Ribiak is, is right. We would need funding to make it happen. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I, with all due respect to my uh, council colleague, I, I just don't understand how one of us can direct staff to put a budget item on here without bringing it back to this table. Um, and that I, I could pick up the phone and, and phone the treasurer or whomever and say I want a line item for $250,000. Whether it's a dollar or ten thousand dollars or two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, somehow the process that should be happening was subverted here. And I, I just and I'm I don't do this as disrespect to you, Councillor, because you probably did it with a, with the best of intentions, but it seems to me it's not in line with the way we do business here. Uh, the second thing is, uh, before we would approve this money, I, it would be interesting to at least receive again the information in advance of trying to make budgetary decisions. And is it, maybe this whole thing could be done, you know, if there's a group that's excited about doing it, maybe the whole thing can be done by volunteerism and, and donation. So. I, I don't know what I can say about it. I, again, I, I would want this red line <laughs> until we get the information. Okay, so, you, so are you, I, I will let Councillor Ribiak uh, maybe respond. Go ahead, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and, and by all means, I meant no disrespect to Council at all in the process. The awkwardness of the timing is in terms of our being in a, a formative stage of discussion at a time when the budget process was going on. So the question is, how can we uh, ensure that, that 
there would be money there in the event that council should uh, agree with 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 the concept of, of supporting community gardens at that minimal level that we're, we're talking about. Your, your point is well taken with respect to volunteerism and donations. In fact, the bulk of the cost of this would be by way of volunteer uh, contributions and, vol and, and fees paid uh, for, for, uh, for the lots. There's nevertheless going to be some cost to the town, and it's that cost that was meant to be covered by uh, that $10,000 item. Um, there's no concept of wanting to spend any of that money unless and until council has an opportunity to see the proposal and support it. It was merely a placeholder, in, in our view, my view, a placeholder for the funds in the event that we should uh, we should be proceeding. Um, we, we are, it, again, it's, it's merely an awkwardness of the timing. We are at this stage in the process of, of, uh, of talking about the budget, and at the same time there is, is the discussion going on. It was only a question of how do we how do we fit one into the other. And I apologize to you if if, uh, if, if that seemed like disrespect. It wasn't meant to be. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, to this, uh, you've said that. Uh, you know, it's not the intention to spend any funds or anything like that. Would you consider um, making a motion that's similar to the one that we approved regarding the uh, Peace Park Master Plan? Uh, Absolutely. That it be um, approved in principle pending, I guess, Council's, uh, council's any further information regarding it and any further Council approval? Absolutely. And that was the intent, Mr. Mayor, that, that none of that should be spent on, until there was uh, was support by uh, by Council to proceed. So. If that requires that kind of uh, motion, I'm, I'm more than prepared to make it. Okay, thank you. And Councillor uh, Kersey, would you second that? Sure. Thank you. Further discussion on this, Councillor Pat? Just so I appreciate that. That's very good because the problem, I, I understand the spirit in which it's done. The truth is that what I'm hearing is Communities in Bloom is looking at this, not really yourself. Mm -hmm. yep. And the fact is that they will be coming here December the 2nd to do and give us a overall proposal on how we proceed, etc. So I'm, I'm very happy that we did it because you're right. In principle, we shouldn't be doing this, period. But however, in uh, consideration, we are asked, not just you, sometimes we're asked, we're put into a position where we, will you bring this to council? And the answer is you as groups are identified should be doing that process, do that. We can't. It's not. So I look forward to the proposal. I'm familiar with community gardens. I've been working on a number of them over the past years. And you're right, in many cases, it's like it ends up to 80% is done by donated services and construction material. And I'm sure that's what's going to happen here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And as a point of information, the uh, Horticultural Society was quite keen on it and looking forward to working on it uh, this year as one of their projects. So it is that partnership that's been trying to develop uh, over a number of years. Any further discussion regarding the amendment? No. All those in favor? Any opposed? That amendment carries. Um, further discussion, Councillor Garcia. Yeah, you did. Say sorry, you had sorry, two Mr. Go ahead. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. To uh, but um, I would like to bring up the arena again. Uh, not so much to deal with uh, staff room, lunch room, but there were some requests specific to the arena that were brought forward, uh, particularly with respect to change room for the young ladies that are playing uh, hockey. Oh. And also, um, with respect to accessibility in the washrooms and what have you, I, we're, we are, as a municipality, under certain time constraints to, uh, to comply with legislation. So I'm just wondering uh, what we will see coming forward uh, to deal with both of those issues. One deals certainly with a privacy issue and um, perhaps exposes the municipality some, to some risk, and the other is uh, uh, Compliance with legislation with respect to accessibility, and yet there's nothing in the, uh, yeah. the budget think, to deal with either. I think we uh, directed staff to talk to uh, the um, hockey association. Ms. Van Ravensway, can you comment further? Or Mr. CAO? Uh, actually, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. That is, uh, mm. those two points are not uh, lost. Uh, in fact, uh, the facilities coordinator is doing the investigative work uh, in order to figure out what the accessibility requirements and costing approximately would be. Uh, as, along with, uh, I know there's been discussion that I've had with the staff uh, with regards to reconfiguring existing space to provide change room space for women's hockey. Uh, so we'll report back to council when we have clarity on those two issues. And your timing, Mr. CEO? Um, was uh, I early can't, October that they presented to us? Yeah, I would expect shortly, although I would be, uh, without speaking to the facilities coordinator about how far along we are in that analysis, I, I would hope uh, by December 16th for the council uh, meeting, but I can't guarantee that. Okay, thank you. Councillor? 
So uh, if there is a budgetary implication there, uh, how would we deal with it at that time? We would just move, move an amendment to... Uh, That's correct. And That's the funds right. would be taken out of the facilities reserve or the, the parks reserve, parks and facilities. Madam Treasurer? Uh, yeah, uh, there's a special report. There will be a separate report coming to council, and at that time, the funding will come uh, probably from the facilities reserve if it's to do with the, uh, the change in uh, and any uh, repairs and maintenance that's required there. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for raising that. I was going to raise it as well. Councillor Drew? Yes, it, in, in regard to that, I, I'm wondering if it would be feasible or, or prudent for us to. Uh, as we did in the case of the community in, in the uh, master plan to put some money there on condition that it's needed, okay? Uh, uh, that way there's no amendment later. I, I'm thinking should we make an estimate of monies that could be available if, in fact, this has to go ahead? Uh, you know, I, I, I just don't feel comfortable in not having a line there and then all of a sudden at the 11th hour saying, hey, we need money, what's going on? So. Uh, you know, it's something we're aware that these things are are out there, and I'm just wondering if if it wouldn't be prudent to to make sure that there is something there. Mr. CEO, um, do we have an estimate? I don't have an estimate. If uh, if we can reconfigure existing space to accommodate an additional change room, there may not be a capital cost. Uh, if depending on the required work for widening entranceways into public washrooms, it may be relatively minor. I don't know that yet. Uh, excuse me, but if it was, uh, it was something that we could uh, that we could uh, possibly take out of the existing budget. Uh, if council wanted to put an arbitrary number in just to placehold it, like you have with other projects, that would be at your discretion. Uh, I, I don't okay. think it's needed right now. Uh, I think we can come back with a better, uh, more fuller report, and if an amendment to the budget is required, then you could do it at that time. But again, it's council's discretion. Councillor, uh, I don't know if you. Sounds like you and others don't want to lose it. Exactly. So I don't know how you, you know, that maybe it'd be, it'd be approved pending additional information coming forward based on the request from Pella Minor Hockey. Um, so I don't know, that can be put into some sort of uh, amendment as well or narrative. I don't know how we'd phrase that. But uh, again, is, is there a specific amount? It should it, be. It wouldn't be an amount, just saying, you know, the, the, the facilities yeah. reports or facilities budgets and, and or the Recreation and Culture Wellness would be approved. With, with with the idea that additional uh, information is going to be coming. Maybe Councillor Pabs helping with some wording here, but I, I guess Just we may want to give that. Oh. Um, <laughs> that I, exactly, Mr. Mayor. I would say that this particular section be approved with the consideration for the provision uh, of uh, change rooms uh, for the women's uh, locker area and uh, the, uh, oh, I lost the and, accessibility. and accessibility. Uh, Issues be provide be cons be part of this uh, consideration of this capital <coughs> budget. Nancy can play with it. She knows where I'm going with it. That works. Yeah. Okay. So there's no amount. So whatever no comes amount, back, there's then further we can, consideration. We can work with the treasurer, and you can All second. figure it out. Yeah. Does that work? Mm -hmm. That okay. works. So, Councillor Pop, you'll make that. Motion. I'll make that motion. Um, Mr. Mayor, will second that amendment. Approved with the. For the provision of the change rooms for women's locker area and accessibility. Right. Um, sort of a, a future consideration. Yeah, yeah, they can make a second or two. Yeah, approved with the consideration for provision of the change rooms for women's locker area and accessibility matters. I don't know if that can be included in the budget, but he brought it back to council. Uh, yeah, but pending. Do you need a second or two? That's right, we don't need Yeah, I, I realize that about halfway through. Okay. Yeah. We're in cap one. Okay. Good. Pending uh, for the report? Second. Yeah. I don't get on that one Certainly, uh, that this. Or anything else you second? <laughs> I'm good with it. So that the it's the parks and recreation section. So that this section be approved with the consideration for the provision of change rooms for women's locker area and accessibility matters to be included in the budget pending further report from staff or something like that. Okay. 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 I'm good with that. Okay. Any further discussion? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor of the amendment, any opposed, that amendment carries. Thank you. Anything further on the recreation, culture, wellness budget? Next section, please. 
to 9, page 9.14, identifies the uh, driveway of the Hillside Cemetery to be repaved in the amount of 25,300. Um, the will come from the cemetery's reserves, which is in the deficit. And uh, that will do the transfer to reserve allocation to ensure that uh, the sustainability of the facility's reserves. And I'll stop here. Thank you. Questions, comments? There was a question or a, a suggestion about uh, benches in the cemeteries. The Active Transportation Committee. We uh, installed so, benches. Pardon? Benches were installed at um, Hillside that, Cemetery. Was we that the Font Hill? Font Hill? Not yet, but I think we have that planned. Okay, so it's, would it be in this budget or is that in the. Just an operating item. Okay. Thank you. Questions regarding cemeteries? I'm not going to bring it up. I'm not bringing it up. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> but if we, if we vote on it, then it's off our plate. Mr. Mandel, thanks. Next section. Section <laughs> <laughs> 10 planning and development. There's a request no, for 120,000. <laughs> 10,000 to uh, complete the final stages of the official plan. Um, the East Bond Hill secondary plan and 100,000 is estimated for the Fenwick secondary plan. The funding will come from uh, planning and development reserves and development charges, and the reserve is in a deficit but fully recovers in 2018. And I'll stop with questions. Councilor Rubiak, Councilor Powell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and I think um, I'm just looking for, for some, some clarification. We have, uh, as, as I think we've all discussed, a huge ton of work, planning work, coming at us in the years to come. And the budget as it's presented suggests that there's no need to prepare from a capital perspective to do that work. I'm, I just need some clarification. Are we, are we that well equipped? Are we that well off? Oh, in 15, 16, 17. Yes. Yeah. Who wants to respond to that? Um, we haven't identified capital moving forward because most of the issues surrounding the needs we are having or going to be having in the future will be operating in nature. So we haven't identified any significant capital expenditures uh, other than what you're seeing here. Not to say that there isn't any, but we haven't identified them at this point. Um, but there will be quite a bit of discussion about the operational needs of the department to prepare for the influx of planning we know is coming down the road. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that the planning is, is largely a, for want of a better word, a labor-intensive uh, exercise, and, and that's, that's all operating costs. No, uh, no systems upgrades, no greater capacity uh, <coughs> computers, none, none of that technology expected to be required. It's well, not a field that needs it. I'm, I'm just asking. Right. We, sorry, uh, through Mr. Mayor, we, we have budgeted, you notice in the techs, uh, the tech budget at the beginning of the night, we have budgeted for technological improvements in the building side. Um, a lot of the capital planning is the planning, the capital comes in through public works and you actually start doing the building. So um, a lot of the planning, when it, when it gets to the point of turning into capital, it's captured in other departments as opposed to the planning department specifically. Um, but we're, we're pretty confident capital-wise uh, recovered. Um, again, operating is going to require a larger discussion. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Councillor Papp, I think I had. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Just a quick question to, through you to the planner. The um, I think Councillor Ribiak hit on one. This, uh, the other two, as far as the update of the official plan and the East Fontail plan, what other scope of work has to be done? Ms. Tavazoli? Or with respect to the official plan? For the official plan, what scope of work? And then same thing, same question to the East Fontail secondary plan. For official plan, that's um, uh, uh, we have OMB and you know, still hearing it's okay. going on in the March um, uh, 11th. Okay. And uh, we just uh, put the same amount for official plan that was uh, <coughs> uh, budgeted for 2013 <coughs> with 2013. Okay. Uh, we are still working with um, uh, those um, other people that put an appeal on our official plan, and we are working with our consultant, and um, we are expecting uh, to come to agreement on uh, the next uh, um, 
for the hearing, and hopefully it will be done with the official plan. Uh, with respect to the East, um, uh, are you talking about East Well, right, uh, I'm looking at the secondary, secondary plan. Yes. Yeah, I'm just trying to find out the scope yes, of work that's outstanding. Uh, um, we're just uh, still um, discussing uh, some areas <coughs> that, uh, with the, our partners on the other side uh, that would be 50-50 the cost. So um, we are not uh, finished with the final plan, as you know, that we discussed and all the where we are at this point. And uh, we are moving forward with respect to the road system and uh, start um, uh, actually the, um, the one of the consultants is going to come uh, to meet with us as a planning uh, department uh, with the uh, design of roads and open up the conversation what exactly needs to be done and we need to discuss it with the region and um, other authorities and uh, uh, we are in the middle of um, uh, implementation kind of um, with respect to the plan but we don't have anything <coughs> final yet but um, the other partner, the, the other side of the uh, table, they believe that we would like to uh, work towards um, the um, uh, plan as um, when it would be um, not town involved. So they wanted to provide uh, some application and see what would be the case and what needs to be done. So we are still working on the plan and also we are working on uh, the application process as well. So at this point, uh, we will um, report back to you uh, probably the, um, early January. Yeah, so basically, in essence, we're covering off, these are the hourly costs for the consultant to continue A, to focus on the official <coughs> plan, subject to whatever comes out of the OMB, exactly. and then B, uh, whatever con components of these Fontail Secondary we need to reconcile and finalize and start. Exactly. Thank you. So okay. is that sufficient? Is that a sufficient amount of money? Is that enough? If it is, then I have no further questions. Well, uh, so we are not done with uh, official plan with 2013. I discussed it with, right. uh, uh, with, uh, with others. And uh, what would be the case? Because we haven't received the invoices. It's open, and uh, we might be a little bit over 10,000 for 2013. And we uh, discuss it, and all, we'll, we'll put whatever would be with, for 2013 carry on the right. same amount for 2000. Thanks, Mr. Okay. Thank, All right, you. thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my uh, question uh, circles around uh, the East Fenwick secondary plan. And the report, as I read it here, says that we're going to undertake a peer review of the landowner group's secondary plan studies. Have they, in fact, completed all the studies that are necessary for the subdivision in East Fenwick? You asked the CEO to respond. I asked the same question or similar question about the idea of a peer review uh, because I thought we gave direction that we would overtake the, the remainder of the study. But let's hear the answer from the CAO. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Mayor, that uh, the, the, the peer review is perhaps misleading. It is an assessment of the work, the studies that have been done to date, and then there will be a requirement of the town to basically purchase those studies from the private sector right. as they've been completed. It wouldn't be full cost, like, you know, if a study costs $100, you're not going to pay $100 for it. Uh, it would be how much, how many cents on the dollar is that study worth that we can compensate uh, the people who have conducted. It's similar to what uh, had occurred in East uh, Font Hill with the studies that have been done previously that we negotiate a, um, a purchase price, if you will. And then the direction from council is that uh, the town proceed with uh, uh, updating the existing studies if required and moving ahead to complete the uh, remaining studies uh, in order to develop that uh, secondary plan for East Fenwick. Thank you. And it's estimated that we can do all of that for 100000 That's correct. Well, I hope that that can be done. Uh, it seems like a light number to me relative <coughs> to uh, the cost of the studies that have been, have to be, have the monies that have been spent in the East Lawn Hill area, uh, even though the East Lawn Hill area is a larger er mm -hmm. area, significantly larger area. It seems like a light number to me, and especially there's nothing going forward beyond two, 2014. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe um, somebody can comment on that because it, it is paid for by development charges. Right. 
I guess it's 95% covered by development charges. Yeah. Uh, so should there be funding going forward, is that how it would be budgeted, Madam Treasurer? Uh, typically, the, the um, study, you know, is anticipated it's going to take about a year's worth of, of work. But given the studies that were identified by um, the Director of Planning and Development and discussions with the CEO, it was uh, determined that $100,000 would, would suffice for the studies that are required. Now, as we go through the year, and it's determined that there's additional funding that's required for the for the next year, we we'll certainly bring that forward. But uh, planning and development capital budget is only for studies. That's what the, yeah. the whole department is, is set up for. And typically, <coughs> you know, they, they just continue to roll forward. So uh, the study, if it, it starts mid uh, mid year and there's dollars left, we simply take the balance and roll it forward to the next year to say there's additional funds or these are the additional funds. Or at that time, we know that it needs to be increased by, say, another 25000 or something. We bring that forward to council in that year. It's very difficult in the year. You know, since I've been here for five years, it's very difficult to estimate what that annual amount might be because you don't know until you're halfway through the year on what the study contains and what's going to be remaining. So that's typically how we budget in that area. But she can speak and, to the 100000 And Ms. Tavazzoli, what's that? Thank you. Um, that's true. Then it, it seems that uh, it uh, might not be sufficient. But uh, with the preliminary you know, discussion that we had with the um, uh, property owners, they uh, provide us, provided us some information that some study that's been um, you know, done previously, but we are not sure how accurate they are and if uh, we can use them because they might be uh, outdated and they are providing us those information on the previous studies and uh, $100,000 is something that we think probably would be uh, sufficient for 2014. And um, I'm not sure that $10,000 that was uh, previously uh, allocated, uh, is it a carry over on top of this 100000 or it's No, it's just included. back reserve. Yeah. It's included, okay. Okay, Thank you. That's her okay, so I'm to understand that if uh, we get do the peer review or the, the anal analysis of the, the studies that have been done, and it's seen that there will be some further studies, significant studies that have to be done, a, a report would come back to council for further allocation of funds. Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right. Anyone else on the planning? There being none. Next section, please. Is library services under library services is a request for twenty five thousand five hundred for computer services development. Um, the project includes a continuation of the overall IT upgrading according to the um, criteria. <coughs> the funding for this project is to, um, is to come from the library reserve, and um, you will note from the reserve that uh, the library is in a deficit to two thousand and eighteen. Thank you. Councilor Rubiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wonder whether, um, through you, the um, uh, Director of the Treasurer might, might repeat the comment that she made earlier with regard to Maple Acre relocation and the year 2015. I just, I'm not sure I caught all of it and I just want to understand it and I want to understand I think how that's that the next one. That's 12. Is that is another 12? Yeah. And, and perhaps my question at this point is um, how are we preparing? in this budget, capital budget for any implications of decisions that, that might be made with respect to Maple Acre. Uh, there's, there's none listed here, and maybe that isn't until the next section, but I just need to understand the how that fits in. in. Very last page in the It's the next section. I'm gonna, you're going to hold that until the next section. Okay. Thank you. Others? Councillor Curtis, any questions? No? Uh, well, very quick question. Or very quick comment, uh, and I don't know that Council's privy to all of this. I think this was distributed to them. Um, and a lot of this will be sorted out, I hope, with the meeting, the joint meeting that we have. But uh, the library, in fact, has a provincial grant reserve of something in the order of sixteen, fifteen thousand six hundred dollars, plus an IT reserve of thirty-nine hundred dollars. So that's about eighteen, call it uh, nineteen thousand dollars. They're asking for roughly twenty-five thousand. So in fact, what they would be asking for would be six thousand dollars. So it would put the, the, the reserve. The capital reserve in a deficit of about six thousand dollars. 
and and but it would leave an operating deficit of eighty one thousand dollars. That's to the end of, of last year. I, I'm just giving that as a point of information, and I'm sure it'll be discussed around the table when we uh, do our joint meeting. And I think so. Those, I guess, the, those numbers aren't reflected here in terms of the funding. So the logical question would be, why not? Maybe we can hear that from the treasurer. Yeah. The library reserve um, is yes. I'm sorry. The library reserve is currently one reserve. It's broken out um, on the books, basically, outside of the accounting system as three separate little um, uh, balances in accounts. One was the trillion grant, <coughs> one is capital, and one is operating. So uh, consistently over the years, we've maintained one reserve balance. So that was that's the reserve that's in a $65,000 deficit at this time. So the proposal came after the budget <coughs> binders were, were made that there was a discussion that they'll use the trillium and uh, separate the reserves into capital and operating. And the capital would have a positive balance, but the operating would have a negative. But it's still borrowing from one reserve to pay down the debt of the other one, at the, essentially at this point in time. It's similar to the town's reserve when rec, rec services is always in a deficit, or was in a deficit, <laughs> <laughs> it's in a deficit. It's borrowing from someone, or someone, the roads reserve, because it has uh, surplus funds to, to, to fund that. So currently, the town is funding the, the library's deficit. Okay. Thank you. And that's all. We'll, yeah, we'll get into some of that, I guess, when we meet jointly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Next section, please. Section 12 is the reserve reserve funds, the development charges, uh, so, uh, five-year summary, and the uh, projection to major infrastructure project are all located in section 12 uh, now. We added a sec another section to the book uh, under facilities. Um, the reserves are classified, as you know, from uh, as discretionary and non-discretionary. Uh, discretionary being those ones like the roads and the rec and the um, um, uh, facilities, uh, which council can have uh, complete discretion over how funds are allocated to the reserve, if there's interest uh, built on the reserves or not. The dis non discretionary reserves are the development charges reserve, water, wastewater, and uh, parkland dedication reserves. Those are ones that are legislated or there's requirements to maintain certain uh, funding and allocation of interest to them annually. You'll see that the uh, balance in the reserve funds projected December 31st, 2014, it decreases uh, about 356,000. The five-year discretionary reserve balance forecast increases overall by 2.8 million. Um, and the reserves are just a projection. Uh, of course, the 2013 um, reserve transfers have not been Done our council at this time. Um, under the development charges continuity schedule, section 12, page 12.2, the five year projection indicates a balance of 978,000. Um, just for council's uh, to note, this is a very aggressive um, projection for the town at this time. We've included that uh, there could be a possible increase in the DC rates coming forward, and also uh, the projection of the growth in the East Fontal Lands has driven that number up. Um, and they are just, uh, again, an estimate of what the five-year forecast will look like. Major project funding requirements from reserve will be debentured to minimize any impacts on the funds held. So we are continuing the debenturing of all the DC components so that we're only taking the principal and interest out every year and not the whole expense of the project. Also in this section is the Maple, Maple Acres Library replacement. It should say these cost us per sheet. Or, um, and then the Community Center of $7 million. And further council approval obviously would be required before these projects went forward. They're here for information purposes only. So I will stop there and um, let council have questions. Okay. Thank you, Council Rubiak. Thank you. So, so just for my clarification, what we've got here is a discretionary item 665. We're not making a decision about it with regard to this budget. That's something we're going to be deciding as, as, as the issue develops in time. And, 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 and I've seen odds, so I'm, I'm assuming that... Uh, Madam Treasurer? Yes, yes uh, we've put it there for information um, <clears throat> at this point in time. Once the, um, the I, I think it's the committee that will get together and move forward and a report will come to council and <coughs> be, uh, be put into the 2015 budget, pending whatever comes out of that. So it's not officially part of the 14, it's just sort of what might come. And some of these items have been in this section for a number of years as we've been trying yes. to work our way through decisions. 
So yes. it's it's it's. Uh, I would say that when we approve this this binder uh, at council, it will be one of those things that we just it, it's there as a placeholder. It's not an actual approval to say that definitely we're going to spend that money in in 15. Um, but it's a it's the treasurer giving us that information and that knowledge. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, if I may comment, it, it, equally, we are not deciding not to go ahead with it. That's still an open question which we yep. will debate and, and come to. Right. And that's what, what I'm looking for. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Others to this section? Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilor Ribby, I can answer the question I was having about the other one, but yeah. that's good. good. That's all I want to know. Councilor <coughs> Kersey, signaling. Just, just a very uh, brief question, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, but you've, you've indicated that you've been fairly aggressive in projecting the DCs. Um, did you, when you were projecting the DCs, I understand there's a, a, a proposed rate increase, but what sort of numbers did you use um, in terms of the number of um, new homes to be built, the number of square feet that are being projected? Was that the same sort of numbers that were projected in the, in the DC report that was brought to us by Watson? Because he kind of plotted out uh, the growth and all that sort of thing? Um, yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, it's a lot more conservative than that. Um, at this point in time, we just did a, a, a percentage increase to minimize the, you know, the potential. There's so much unknown and there's so much variable right now at this point in time. Um, we are, you know, moving along. It gets adjusted each year annually so, so yes. that we're staying in target with that. But basically, we took the um, proposed increase that's coming and we were conservative in that and, and put that number in and then just put it in so that we were consistently up maybe 5% of home sales. See. So okay. from that number. Okay, thank you. Others to this section? Um, two, I think two questions. This year we received uh, $170,000 from Hydro. And we also had the Hydro dividend. <coughs> My understanding that was in one of the discretionary reserve funds. Is that not the case? And, what, and if so, where is it? I believe it's in the roads reserve um, that we put the uh, the, fund, the the monies from that, and you wouldn't see it in the ins and outs for 2014 because it's been placed in the reserve uh, in 2013. Okay. And the parkland dedication. Um, what? Uh, there's a million dollars there. What? What can that be spent on? Can you say the question regarding what can one spend the parkland dedication fees on? For a new park, park probably, and uh, some amenities with respect to the uh, um, parkettes that we can provide some um, greener spaces and uh, <coughs> can use that budget uh, <coughs> money uh, with respect to. Uh, providing some green areas um, <coughs> so, uh, that can uh, contribute to the um, um, complete street as well. <coughs> or okay. Exactly, the, the parks that we have. But uh, mostly with uh, respect to the uh, new trends, it would be parkettes that um, uh, mostly in um, urban area that will uh, look for um, um, providing some smaller uh, version of parks that would be uh, uh, spread out and not just what, uh, just huge parks along. So um, we can use it um, towards new green areas. Which so is so just for clarity, it's not for existing parks, for bettering existing parks, it's for, or is it? Or is it rather for parks in new growth areas? It's sort of like a, development charge for, for parks in those areas? It's supposed to be new parks, new okay. green spaces, not for ma uh, maintenance or it um, could be additions to the existing parks, but it should be something uh, as new green um, spaces. But it can be used for a complete street, escaping yes, and those kind of things? Yes, you know, that's, that's the new trends that you, uh, with the, uh, you know, some uh, parkettes, that you can, uh, you know, uh, allocate uh, a part of this money towards uh, small parkettes uh, along the streets. Thank you. I think maybe that's something that we can look at as development grows in the East Fawn Hill area. That 
that parkland dedication will grow. Maybe some of those funds can be used for some of the greening that this council has expressed interest in. In addition to um, what the director had mentioned, in the Parks and Rec area, you'll notice there's a contribution of 150000 mm -hmm. that comes from Parkland dedication, and that's for those items like Centennial Park that is having a master plan. It's constantly getting additions, and it does qualify for that funding as well. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Kersey had another point. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, and just for a point of clarity, um, <coughs> I had brought forward in our <coughs> planning session a week or so ago uh, some discussion about the CIP and the contributions for that. And I note that there's no transfer. Is that an operational issue that we deal with at the operating budget, um, or is that a capital item? I mean, the transfer comes from operating, right? So is that something we would deal with at operating? Or is that something we deal with at capital? True, you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the, the transfer was approved by council in previous years as, as uh, the surplus fell out. We, we allocated some of the surplus funds to the CIP reserve. So there was no, there's no further approval from operating to move monies into the CIP funding. Um, if council wants to uh, suggest that, then it would form part of the, the operating budget that there would be a question. transfer from reserve. That's a question mm -hmm. because there was some call for some more information and some consideration that I think the CAO knows where we're going with mm -hmm. that. So it's, as long as it's something we can deal with at the operating, I'm good with it. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Building on the CIP discussion at the last Heritage Committee meeting, uh, there was some discussion and, and I believe a request from that committee will be coming forward to, uh, to look at the possibility of having some funds in a CIP type uh, reserve so that any folks who uh, have a property that is designated and the uh, any kind of restoration or renovations would be more costly to, to meet the heritage specs and uh, wondering if that could be used as a uh, an incentive or, or a uh, an assistance measure to folks that would be getting more costs because of the fact that uh, a heritage restoration is more expensive than a normal one and just wondering if uh, if we could consider that or if we should consider that or should we wait until we get uh, the letter from there but definitely the discussion was in place for that and, and uh, <coughs> uh, they thought that this would be a, uh, a feasible path to follow. Thank you. The CAO would respond. Uh, yeah, we are considering that. That was brought up, uh, Councillor Kersia brought up the Heritage CIP um, idea. Uh, also looking at expanding the CIP area out in both Greenwick and in uh, Fond Hill along Highway 20. So those are all things we're considering. Okay. Uh, it'll take a bit of time to put all that together and come back to us with a recommendation, but we are considering the heritage component. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Pupo, anything further? Yeah, just to summarize the, the 2015 budget um, with these requests, allow council and staff to stay focused on the street strategic plan. And uh, the successes of past years have been identified and we're moving forward with them. All levels of staff have brought forward recommendations in the budget process and again, um, it was a very uh, taxing uh, ex uh, process this year for the uh, budget process to, to bring it in at this level. And so I thank the directors <coughs> and the staff for their input. And there was also community input again, which will bring brought forward into the operating on exactly what happened with each of those. And um, we're just continuing our vision of being the vibrant, case creative and caring community. And I'll leave the resolution to uh, the clerk to read out. Okay, thank you. Councillor Pop. Yes, quick question, uh, uh, comment first. Thank you to staff, uh, Madam Treasurer and CAO. It is a very difficult process as I've been on the other side of this to put together a capital budget that is balanced and somewhat also forward thinking. So I thank you a great deal for that. And I know the mayor is gonna do mm -hmm. that. It's uh, it's complicated, and when I think back all the years of how municipal budgeting has taken place, the issues we deal with 10, 15 years ago have just multiplied, so the possibility we have is expensive. The question is more along the lines, and it's just that, and we can talk about it more, 
You know, we mentioned about debenturing. Typically, what do we debenture for? Uh, over a 20 year period, or is it left open depending on the discretion of the project? I'm just curious. Uh, it depends on the, um, the total volume dollar wise of the project. Um, we, we typically are debenturing for 10 years right now. Okay. It gives the best uh, scenario, but um, with the debenture that's coming in 2015, a recommendation to council might be that it debentured out longer. Um, just for the sake of the, the tax levy increase and so forth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's thank it. you. Well, thank you, Councilor Patman. I'd certainly uh, like to echo those comments and thank the Treasurer and staff, uh, the CAO, for putting together this budget. Um, so you guys expect lots of work, uh, and, and certainly um, through the years, it's gotten <coughs> clearer and better, and uh, really listening to the community when it's proposed to us and to council as we work our way through the process. So certainly appreciate uh, you coming forward with this capital budget. <coughs> we do have the, um, the motion by Councillor Papp, second by Councillor Kersey, <clears throat> excuse me, that the capital budget presentation be received, that the Committee of Whole recommend the council approve the 2014 portion of the capital budget and receive the balance of the five-year projected capital budget for information, and that the budget request of 25,500 identified by library services as computer services development on page 11 in the binder remain unspent until a report as to how these costs will be funded is presented and approved by council at a future meeting of council, and that information regarding the major infrastructure request for 2014 be received, 15 be received for information and the other three amendments, which I won't read right now. Any further discussion? There being none, I call the question. All as amended, all those in favor? Any opposed? That amendment is carried. No, that motion is carried as amended. Thank you for your offer. <clears throat> Thank you. The next item has been moved by Councillor Kersey, seconded by Councillor Pop. This regular meeting of Committee of the Whole will be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for Monday, December 2nd, unless sooner called by the Mayor. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. We certainly appreciate uh, Councillor Lane sitting here uh, around the table with us and asking questions uh, as appropriate. And uh, we look forward to working with you in the future on this budget. And thank you. This meeting is adjourned.